Cam said, Hayden Carmona, what is up? Hayden Carmona said, Chilling. When you sing the night, so come on and free your mind. The way you did mine feels just like I wanted to. Hayden Carmona said, Waiting for tonight. Feels just like I wanted to This time This time said When nice. you said that So come on and free your mind The way you did mine Feels just like I wanted to What's the deal? How you doing? I am Anson, aka Cam. Cam's on the show live. Now, question is this. What's going on? How you doing? We were supposed to be doing... <laughs> I forgot this will be on And I was in a meeting with that statue. I thought I was on live. I never hit the live button. I was like, I've never. Hayden Carmona said, remember what you said yesterday. What did I say? What did I say yesterday? What did I say yesterday? Yeah, you got to remind me. What? What did I say? That was different. What, what am I saying? What, what did I say? Straight up, tell me. Hayden Carmona said, You're a different person on stream than you are in regular life. Well... Yeah, because I... Uh, sometimes... Panic comes out. That's <laughs> why. And I, had to, I gotta fix that. That's, what I, that's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, I gotta fix that side. So I I tend to make sure that I relax a little. Um, this is so this is not gonna be doing raging because this is today's not a rage day. That it, it's not no, no no need to be raging, but oh, 
because all I'm doing is watching you are watching E3. So that's what it is. That's all I'm doing right now. So it should be none of that at all. Usually my stream is at, at after dark anyways. Night time. So 8 p.m. Later than that, as when it gets to, you know, adult content, that's a, um, I do it's content, but still, definitely, definitely gonna be. Thank you for the raid, I appreciate that, man. Oh, yeah. Do you stream? There's so much stuff we do in here. So, this is what's going on. I supposed to be on Nintendo. Supposed to be watching Nintendo and at 4, 4.30 p.m. Standard time from Bandai Namco. Those are the only two I'm really interested in today. Those two. And there's some more stuff that's going to be going on as well. But I have to make sure I'd be ready to get out of here get to somewhere else by 6 p.m. So... I'm gonna stay as long as I can. I'm gonna leave. So I know we got what? We got like four hours. We got hours. Still, I want to make sure y'all understand that. I'll be doing this right here. Okay. They're doing on the Nintendo Treehouse right now. They have gone through a lot of different games. They showed already showed the new Metroid game. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> They did the new Metroid game. They showcased uh, a little bit of Mario, another Mario game. I'm not going to lie. Another uh, podcast uh, with Vigo. Actually doing an interview with them and stuff like that. Everything else. And we're talking. So I've been busy. I'm sorry. Um, the things that we got going on right now, making sure that's done. I want to make sure y'all see that. But I want y'all to see something. Because I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I thought it was people try out. Well, this is the first thing I saw today. It was good. It was good. So, I'm going to show y'all this before we get to Nintendo. I call of duty call of duty then you got battle. That was a whole other level shooter. So <clears throat> let's just jump into it. I'm just gonna jump into it. I'm gonna clear my throat and I'll be back. I'm in chat. So hit me up. My bot will respond for me. So I will see y'all. E-I-O-R-A said later Cam said, You're relieving Alora. E I O R A said, The Cam Zone Show, I thought I heard you say you re ending, haha. Hey folks, lovely to have you joining us and welcome home to the battlefield. What a week it's been for all of us. You now know what we know, that the all-out warfare of Battlefield is headed to 2042. So stick around with me, Freeman, hello, and some of the gang from Across Dice. We're here with you for the next while while we look back at everything that we've revealed this past week. Now, to keep things as safe and responsible as possible, 
We are pre-taping this live stream so that we can spend as much time as we can talking with you and taking you behind the scenes. But please do say hello in the chat. We're all watching live along with you from our homes. So starting us off, I'm here with Oscar Gabrielson and Daniel Berlin, Design Director for 2042. Um, it's lovely to see the both of you. I mean, Oscar, you're looking resplendent. But look, we've had a year of working from home, right? And you can use that time in different ways. One, of course, to build an amazing Balfi 2042, of but course. you can also experiment with <laughs> beards and, you know, exotic haircuts. But Daniel and I have agreed as we reach our next big milestone, I can finally drop this thing. So we just need to hurry a bit, that milestone, right? And then we should be all good, okay. back to normal. No pressure, Daniel. Nope. No pressure at all. So let's get started then. 2042, a brand new setting for yeah. us for Battlefield. This is exciting. What? got us to this era. Yeah, it's actually one of those moments I remember uh, quite dearly. So I think it must have been three years ago now. Um, yeah, we well. kind of headed up on the 11th floor at Dice and we were actually supposed to look at the concepts for this next Battlefield game. And this time around, the team went quite wide. I think we looked at 12 different concepts or so. Mm. Um, some really unconventional things, some that took us back in time, some, some things that took us into the future. We looked at Rhythmatics and, you know, a lot of concepts. And then we got to this thing that we called 2042 and we all looked at that, you know, piece and kind of looked around the room and we just kind of felt it in here. We found it. It was this kind of special moment of taking the best pieces of Balfi 3 and 4, that notion of like modern warfare, and then spicing it up a bit with cutting edge hardware. And some of that we've seen in the last couple of days, of course. Yeah. And another big thing for us as well. This is the first battlefield in many years for us where we're putting full focus on multiplayer. Yeah, I mean, it's a big one for us. I mean, multiplayer is what we do best. And yep. we've done best across now the two decades the Battlefield has existed. So, you know, in Battlefield 2042, three core experiences. Of course, now we've talked about all-out warfare. We're going to bring back Conquest and Breakthrough on a bigger scale than ever. 128 players, some pretty cool big land masses to play on. And then we have uh, more to update on as we get to EA Play as well. Yeah, because there really is so much more to this journey that we'll be sharing with all of you. Um, Let's get into the absolute nitty gritty of things though. Um, Daniel, mm -hmm. big changes to Conquest. As Oscar mentioned, big focus for us in this first section. Yeah. But Conquest has had some significant changes to meet this big new scale that we have for 2042. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this has been, it is a leap for us, right? Um, and when we go to 128 players and when you go to a larger play space you can't just kind of copy what we've done before we had to also kind of reinvent how we approach level design and how we approach pacing in the game so what we're doing this time around to really encapsulate still the essence of battlefield and the pacing um, that our players know and love is that we're introducing this concept uh, that we're calling clusters while watching the, the the gameplay reveal for example we have this map uh, called hourglass uh, which is set in qatar which is really, really awesome. And um, this map really speaks to the new mentality around the, the level design, I think, um, and the clustering, because you can almost imagine it as a massive battlefield, but within that massive battlefield, there, there's almost uh, multiple battles going on. If you go to the Western part of this map, you'll find a huge stadium. Um, and within the stadium itself, there's multiple capture points. And if you want to, own um, the entirety of the stadium, that entire sector, you have to actually fight and control all of the capture points within that sector when, to capture the entirety of the stadium. But then you can, so imagine that you're in there with your, with your squad and you're, you're engaged in a close quarter combat situation and it's quite hectic and then you manage to win. You capture the objectives in the stadium and go like, okay, whew, now it's a little pause, right? Um, then you run outside the stadium and you open up your maps and you go like, okay, where do we go next, guys? We, we see that they're capturing the Neon City on the far end of the map. And then you go like, okay, we got to get there. So you bring up your, your call-in tablet. You say like, okay, we need a transport vehicle. I need it over there. It comes down with a parachute, lands in front of you. Your squad hops in and then you have a, a, a traversal as you travel to this other sector, which is a sector full of skyscrapers where you can zip line between the roofs of the skyscrapers as you fight for multiple skyscrapers. So it's this concept of uh, clustering objectives into uh, concentrated areas where we can have high pacing, um, but then also having different types of gameplay in these. And in between these spaces as well, you have a um, uh, vast open landscape on the, the hourglass map, for example, the rolling sand dunes. And it's really cool for 
people that really love vehicle gameplay to be engaged in vehicle on vehicle type of combat in between these clusters but there's of course also within the level design areas of of our maps that is is, uh, is built for the infantry and um vehicle mix and in hourglass there's a perfect spot for this if you go down south of the map there's actually a, a quite sizable village down there which has interior for infantry but the vehicles can also roam the streets there and it's a really good matchup in there and in the center of the map there you have these massive arches that is uh, overlooking this highway intersection where this massive convoy has run to a stop and there's lots of uh, vehicles that have been abandoned and stuff like that so lots of stuff is happening um, with conquest uh, and with the level design in order to really bring out the, the, the scale and the, uh, for us to really infuse more battlefield moments and uh, just sandbox gameplay in general, I'd say. Yeah, because this is very much just what we do, isn't it? Making these yeah. big maps. And I mean, we were talking earlier about how a lot of this new approach for us with clustering is very much inspired by the success we've had in maps in the past. Yeah, like yeah. Goldman Railway, we were chatting about earlier on, and Sinai Desert with the village that you kind of have there yeah, as well. Perfect example. This where a lot of that kind of comes from for you and the team? We kind of tested the concept a couple of years ago with those games. Um, but now we, we're kind of taking that concept and, and we're, we're, we're taking it to the max, basically. So um, it's, it's, it's been really fun for us to kind of test around these different types of uh, setups and landing on something that we really like. But I think that it's important to mention with Conquest that like the freedom and access to the sandbox is literally at your fingertips. Do you need a vehicle? Okay, call it a tablet, get it, get it in here. Do you want to change out your, um, your customization on your weapon? Hey, the plus menu, just change it out on the fly. You don't have to respawn or anything like that. And the freedom of choice. Like, hey, I want to have close quarters. I go to the stadium. Hey, I want to have some awesome, crazy verticality. I go to the Neon City. I want to have, you know, vehicle on vehicle gameplay. Let's roam the fields in between. But then we have breakthroughs as well, right? In 2042, we, we're, we're, we're more separating the experiences and making them more distinct and leaning into the strengths of them to a higher degree, I would say. So while you have this, what we call varied pacing in Conquest, where, you know, you have those high octane combat situation in the, in, in, the, in the stadium, and then the pacing goes down. And then you call in your vehicle, and then you travel, and you talk, and you strategize. Should we attack the city from the south, from, from the west? In Breakthrough, it's more like we take 128 players and it's two teams, the defender and the attacker, and we compress them down to a smaller space. We say like, now you're going to fight in this sector only. So Breakthrough is this experience where you go on this journey throughout the map, um, but it's, it's just short time to action. It's just chaotic and crazy, but we're still leaning into the size here as well. We wanted to give you more tactical opportunity when you're playing Breakthrough than we've necessarily done in the past. Um, so we still use the width of the map to a large extent. So you, if you find yourself spawning, running forward, just like, oh, there's a meat grinder in front of me, lots of people dying here, lots of things going on. We're now going to give you ample space to flank around and then take other strategic opportunities as well. Yeah. And it's, it really is exciting. So many of the Battlefield fans that I've been chatting to uh, since we revealed the game and then showed off gameplay uh, last week at Xbox, um, they are really excited at these changes, but then of course, there's so many new players yep. who suddenly are really excited to find out what this is. And I think one of the best new things that we're really adding is that we're creating kind of new ways for people to get into the experience with our use of AI. Yeah, I mean, AI has been one of those things that we've been kind of, you know, cooking back at dice for many years. And Balfi 2042 is kind of the perfect timing with next-gen tech to introduce it. So in Balfi 2042, you can actually kick off the game and play solo with AI squad members on a whole big team with AI members facing AI. And that's just a great way to kind of learn the basics of the game. You know, mastering weapons, understanding how the vehicles and gadgets work. And kind of from there, then graduating into a mix of both. Both with like real humans in PvP and AI. And it's just a really good way for us to onboard new players. But actually, even in regions where sometimes we don't have enough players online on the service, we'll just fill that up with AI until everyone comes online. And we can have those servers full with only in Battlefield Mayhem 24-7. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> um Going back to the maps, Daniel, um, they're big. We've obviously been able to show off one of them uh, with Hourglass in the trailer this yep. past weekend. But just in general, like to help conceptualize it for people, just how big are they? So like when we give these past references to some of our older maps, which are quite big, now we're at 128 players, like how much of a scale increase have we gone for on some of our maps? There's not, there's not like a general number we said like okay they need to be two times or they need to be four times or something like that we we just 
for same kind of staying true to the formula of battlefield in the sense that some maps are smaller than others but um across the board things have increased in size because this is the nature of having 128 players and needing to kind of accommodate for that in terms of pacing so it has grown in size but we still have maps that are um uh smaller than for, for hourglass for example is one of the bigger ones we have it's i think it's the second biggest one uh next to irreversible which is the the biggest one we've built and i think that one is 5.9 square kilometers which is quite insane but again in that map when you go there uh, we will have the same mentality of the uh, uh, like the clustering. So if you want to have um, the example you gave, Freeman, with uh, Sinai, Sinai Desert, with the town, it's like if you go into Reversible, there is a place there called the um, the uh, the oil ports, which is a, a really big um, uh, industrial space with silos and also uh, barracks for 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 workers to live in and in, in, um, different types of industrial buildings and stuff where you can still get um, that really high octane battle and. Over to uh, the side, there's really also a big, big different oil types rig, of which has a lot of close quarter combat. So it's that concept of choosing where you want to fight in this massive battle, um, uh, basically. And of those maps, obviously, we've mentioned two of them there, Hourglass um, and then Irreversible. But we're, we're launching with seven for our all-out warfare part of the game, like Oscar, which so far have you found to be the absolute coolest i just i have to say kaleidoscope again i'm a big kind of siege of shanghai fan from bf4 <laughs> but kaleidoscope is kind of that but on steroids yeah. uh you know with both the wingsuit that we're introducing in the game the grappling hook that mckay uses and the zip lines there's just some like awesome you know gameplay that emerges from all of that when players are like flying between skyscrapers like right left and center must be one of the favorites how about yourself yeah that is i mean it's a I also love urban settings in that sense. Uh, it gives you that kind of almost like heat feeling when you're running on, on the city streets and ducking behind cars. You know, cars are the best covers in video games ever. They just break in fun ways. So they're awesome to hide behind. Um, and of course, you know, having multiple skyscrapers, having, you know, up in a penthouse of the skyscrapers and fighting another squad that is in another penthouse and is zip lining in between. That's super cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, my favorite, I like Hourglass a lot when we saw in the gameplay reveal. I just love the stadium and the neon city and the town to the south and the arches in the middle and the rolling sanders in between. I think that's just so cool because there's so much variety in there. You know, you can really choose how you want to play. Um, but yeah, no, that will have to say that one. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> But Orbital is pretty nice. Orbital. Just waiting for the rocket launch. There's this like perfect space you can stand on and like to see the rocket. Launch. Hopefully no one shoots you when you're watching the thing because it's quite spectacular. Yeah. That's a favorite, right? That is definitely a favorite. I like that a lot. I like the big open space in front of the rocket, which is kind of like a, a, a space where you can move in between for a lot of vehicles to do. But the infantry can move to the sides around it and go from, from building to building to building. But it also has a really cool other aspect because you have the launch site over here. But on it's the kind of other like a, side a of the hill in the mountain, you actually have a cryo facility. Mm. And you can choose to like take the roads or you can choose to kind of just run across the mountain if you want to. But there's also a massive tunnel that goes through. And I've been in some play tests where it's just, okay, we captured, you know, the uh, the rocket facility. And now we should, let's head on to the cryo plant. Mm. And we, we get into a transport vehicle and we hop in and we start going in that tunnel. It's just like, no, no, no. And then obviously you go from a turn and it's just like, in one of the places I was facing two enemy tanks <laughs> and I was like oh yeah that's it and then boom I'm gone yeah um so that tunnel is really cool it's just a lot of cool moments and a lot of and a lot of the 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 game to spaces we've built it's difficult yeah. to choose which one is the is the is the favorite to be honest I mean it really is the most common thing though because I ask this question of everyone across the studio and it's it's always the same every week because we get to play test and we, we work through all of the different maps every week we discover something new that we love about yep. these new ones mm -hmm. it's so cool um yeah. of these maps though of course that they're, they're, they're more than just maps they're, they're very dynamic in their nature of them we we've obviously took a lot of inspiration from our past and looked you know now very much at the new technology offered to us by frostbite yeah. uh, and the upgrades that we've done on all our engines these worlds are a lot more dynamic now mm -hmm. oscar yeah, I mean, we've worked for a good three years now on some of these new weather and evolution systems. Um, I remember in that first pitch when we talked about the game, maybe it was Daniel, maybe it was someone else from the design team said like, wouldn't it be cool 
if we could throw like a real-time tornado onto the battlefield that could turn everything kind of upside down and cause massive destruction. And I think everyone's sitting there kind of nodding. We looked over at the tech team and they're like, oh, are, are we supposed to make this work? Uh, and then kind of a year later, we had that first prototype. And I remember us showing it to other team members like, okay, but that's pre-rendered, right? It just has to be fake. Can't look that like that. And we were like, yep, it works. And I think, you know, it started with, you know, being a thing that would run like spectacle on the maps in massive yeah. ways. But now it's kind of one of the core gameplay drivers as well. I mean, you can actually use those, that big tornado to your advantage, especially if you strap on that wingsuit, mm. uh, just to kind of escape crazy situations. Uh, there's just more of that. And then on Hourglass, of course, Sandstorm, pretty epic performance. Yeah, there's a massive sandstorm, a huge wall of sand that also passes by. I think one of the things that I really love about, you know, the tornado is the, like just physics are fun in games, right? And this is a big kind of like physics entity just moving across <laughs> this, the map and you don't know where it's going to go. It doesn't go in the same path every time. Um, you don't even know if it's going to show up, to be honest. And it just causes a lot of those, you know, unexpected, fun physics moments where there's this the, the 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 scenario i described in the in the event where i'm just like i'm running and that was on orbital um uh, and i was running from the rocket towards the rocket assembly building across that big open space and of course i was stupid so i was just like i can run that no problem so i started running and then you know i guess they just started running and then i just it was the shots are coming back yeah. I was like oh, of course i mean i'm, I'm stupid and I look over, you know, and there's a, there's a there's a sniper. He's not in a building. He's actually sitting on a little knoll over there, um, and he's taking shots at me. And I'm just like, oh well, this is over. I mean, I'm just gonna start to zigzag and do my stuff and try to survive. But the storm is actually somewhere else right now. But it's it's it happened to have picked up a transport vehicle and flung it up, and then it had flung it across the map. So I'm just running there, and all of a sudden we just see like. And he just lands on the sniper and he's like, yes, <laughs> that's because that's the fun, unexpected things when you introduce a lot of physics in, in, into this, into a sandbox um, environment. So I think it's such a great addition to the sandbox. And that's really what we want with um, 2042 in its essence, you know, infuse the game with lots of new tools and, the, you know, the tools that are modern, that are cutting edge technology and all that. So you just push that in there and let players have a lot of fun with them, combining things and doing that stuff. That's the... That's the secret sauce, I think. Yeah, and it's not just the big flashy things either. There's lots of just small interactions we've built back into our levels now yeah. to give players much more agency as they kind of move about the space. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely, there's, we had those in Battlefield 4 as well, um, but we, we've expanded the roster there. So, you, you know, things like, hey, I'm holding this, uh, this checkpoint and I see that there's, we're playing Breakthrough, for example, and I see there's tanks coming at us. It's like, oh, I'm going to race the bollards. So they would have to have a teammate actually leave the tank or have someone else come in and embrace, uh, lower them for you to be able to, to pass through and actually get to the capture point. And I mean, we mentioned all the zip lines. There are uh, different types of gates and doors that you can lock down. Um, there's bridges that you can uh, raise, that you can lower on, on, on Kaleidoscope, for yep. example. So um, we really leaned into the dynamic nature of the space and make it feel like you can interact and you can counter different type oh there's an attack coming oh i'm gonna you know i'm gonna raise the bridge so now their vehicles can't actually pass and stuff like that so um i think the team has done a really great job with that stuff yeah um that's the world then that 2042 takes place in but if that's the world that we're playing with what about the things that we're actually playing with in those worlds so weapons gadgets vehicles we've made some pretty big changes for 2042 the biggest of which that people have been chatting about is specialists Cam and said, how that's kind of i am getting battlefield pre-order now uh, in terms of roles in the past so daniel how how are the specialists fitting into this world so the specialists are so let's take a step back i think first because we we looked at this for quite some time in terms of what we wanted to do here and we looked at a lot of player data we looked at feedback and we looked into like the internal sentiment and there is a lot of things we can also see through the data specifically that a lot of players chose their class based on the, um, uh, the primary weapon that was available. Meaning you wouldn't, uh, you didn't choose necessarily a recon because of the gadgetry, but you actually chose a recon because you got the bolt action sniper rifles. And you didn't choose um, your class because you wanted to play a certain role. So that was the thing Cam we wanted to kind of target said, with this change. Caden Carmona, what games are you uh, excited we to about bring seeing the game on into a space? And when you choose which specialist to play with, you go like, okay, I want to play this particular role. So what we've done is that basically you have what we, the, the traditional class, say recon, is more of a category now. 
And underneath that category, you have multiple specialists that, that, that have, has a gameplay role that is a recon gameplay role. But what we're also doing to kind of, um, uh, to, to bring this even further in terms of unlocking the sandbox is that we're saying that, take Casper, for example, he's a recon type of specialist. His particular gadget that he uses, that only he can use, is the recon drone. Um, but aside from the recon drone, Casper can bring a shotgun, a sniper rifle, an SMG, an LMG, whatever you want to put on Casper, you can put on Casper. You can put a rocket launcher on Casper to, 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 um, to, to couple with the, uh, the recon drone. You can put as a throwable, you can equip him with C4. So we get away from that space as well, where, as we kind of seen in previous games, where uh, on certain maps that were vehicle heavy, you just saw pretty much one class being played, the one that can counter vehicles. But now you choose your gameplay role, and then we have a, 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 a whole array of open gadgetry that you can just freely choose from. So we, we see a better diversity in terms of gameplay styles uh, across all our maps when we're playing the game. Okay, we talked about Casper there. We showed three other of our specialists off in the past week. We've got Falk, McKay, and Boris. Your favorite of the bunch? Oh, yeah. I always get into too, too much trouble. I'm, <laughs> I'm a way too aggressive Balfi player, so the grappling hook with McKay helps a whole lot. But there, there's something special, right, with Falk as well. Um, you know, getting the opportunity to revive teammates, you know, from afar. It creates these really unexpected moments where you're like, I can actually help that guy. And he can shoot the other guy in the back. You're like, yeah. Like it's never feel felt so great to actually revive a person that kind of really helped the team move forward. Yeah, no, Falk is really good. Um, I think that's going to be a really favorite favorite type of specialist for people that were really into um, medic type of gameplay. Mm. But we we need, I think we need to just quickly mention that like Falk sits under the uh, support uh, class category, and we're 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 kind of categorizing support as a character that. Uh, supports the teammates through, you know, ammo distribution uh, or through reviving or healing. So there's multiple characters within the support category. Um, Falk specifically has the pistol Surette, um, like Oscar mentioned. So she can heal you at a distance, but she can also revive you at a distance. And she also have, has a particular trait, a combat surgeon, which means that when she does revive you, she brings you back to full health, which is something if someone else revives you, another type of specialist revives you, they won't bring you back to full health. So it really leans into that uh, particular role even stronger and pushing that. Yeah. Of course, we have Boris as well. He was yeah. fulfilling an engineer role for us. First time we've had that engineer role back in quite some time. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Boris is, is is a really cool guy. Um, he has the uh, the sentry system as his particular uh, gadget, and this is a sentry system that Boris can place down, and it will acquire targets and support you uh, with supportive fire. But the key is here is that the trait that that Boris has means that he needs to be close to the sentry for it to be able to uh, actually be uh, as effective as it can be, and it's 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 also quite of a um, a squishy um, spe um, uh, gadget in that sense, um, because it, it's a perfect thing for someone like Casper, for example, who sits uh, at a distance uh, with his recon drone, because the recon drone can also fire darts of EMP. So he can actually fly over with his, his, his recon drone and shoot darts at the, at the turret and take it out instantly, because it's weak against EMP, it's also weak against um, uh, explosions. So there's always that, you know, rock, paper, scissor counter gameplay taken into consideration when we're building all these things. Yeah. So that's our specialists and plenty more specialists to show you guys before we get to launch too. But let's talk about the weapons. Um, I mean, we've got a great selection of weapons already in the game, but there's a, a very significant gameplay change that we kind of lightly touched on earlier on. People would have seen it for the first time during our gameplay reveal mm. this, this past weekend. Um, the plus menu. Yeah. This is huge. It is. It's one of those things where, particularly this thing, I'd say, it was one of those things that, like, you know, from already from a conceptual state when it was on paper and just did, you know, conceptual mockups of it, it was just like, ooh, this is pretty sweet. Uh, and then once it actually went into the game, it was, we didn't, so, so sometimes certain features you have to iterate on them, for, you know, to get to a place where it's like, ah, that's where it goes. But this one was just, it was just there. And we did, we also done external feedback on it. And we've done internal feedback on it and the the the, the general output is, is like it feels like this is something that has always been here and it should have always been here 
it does it so it feels like something that should we should have done it a long time ago yeah, almost <laughs> um but in, in general it means that like you're running around and um and you find yourself in a in a situation you didn't expect yourself to find yourself in which is battlefield in a nutshell uh, i ran around a corner and she was like oh okay this is now i'm in this space and i didn't that's not what i spawned with so how do i counter that do i respawn it's like no you can you, you can actually just take up your weapon in front of you change out the barrel change out the the under barrel attachment you can change out the scope um, and you can change out the ammo type, so you kind of change the way it plays completely. Um, but there, there is still a range in terms of balance here, for example, which is important to to call out, I think. Um, and that's like you can't have a SMG and turn it into a sniper rifle. You know, an SMG still sits within its 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 category of usage, but it can, it can it can it can deviate slightly to either to to either side, right? So it, the you, the plus system is not going to be removing the, the the need for weapon archetypes. We just make each weapon archetype somewhat more um, wide in its usage in that sense. Yeah, I'd say that there's a red thread that goes through the whole game. Kind of the, then we we decide this early on in the game vision, right? This notion of like adaptability for players, exactly. given like everything that's happening on the battlefield, we need to give the players you know the optimal amount of choices. At, in real time so plus menu is uh, you know an example of that mm -hmm. the call-in systems you can kind of drop in vehicles like, kind of at, at any time but also that choice with the specialists you know giving them the option to use any primary weapon or open gadget they wish yeah and like just unlock loads of sandbox moments like in past battlefield games you were kind of stuck to be honest and the only way to kind of change your gear was actually more or less to redeploy yeah uh, and now you're taking these kind of real time time decisions just creating a whole bunch of new mayhem right so it's a lot of fun and one of the best ways to take out a sniper if you don't have a car being flung by a tornado for you. <laughs> but that's a good thing, though. That's a good yeah. thing, but yeah. it, that doesn't happen every time. Uh, it's, it's like if you see, you, this happens now in the playtest, by the way. Uh, so if, if there's a sniper laying on a hill somewhere, and there's a certain range you can, which, which you can call in um, the vehicles, you can't come in for it, but if you're within a certain range, you can actually call in a tank that lands on them. So it's a good way to take out that sniper. Just oh, he doesn't even know, and all like he's just laying there, prounding and sniping. All of a sudden, I called in a tank that just lands on his head and kills him. That's pretty fun. There's so many gadgets as well to play around with. I mean, Oscar, you mentioned there. We now have we have open gadgets, but yeah. of course, we've also got our class gadgets as well. Like they really do amp up the sandbox nature mm -hmm. of the gameplay. Mm. No, so each specialist has its um, the gadget that is connected to to them specifically, and then we have the bucket of open gadgetry, and the open gadgetry bucket is 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 very varied and diverse, um, and it means that you can stick with a specialist and still you know be eligible in every situation you find yourself in because you can always be, oh, okay I'm gonna be in this part of the map where there's a lot of vehicles I can decide to to equip. Um, some gadgetry that is that is good for fighting vehicles, even if I'm playing with, say, Falk, that where my primary role is is healing. I can still be a healer in a combat situation that involves vehicles and still be viable. And that's something that is um, that is new for Battlefield, and it's something that I think we needed. Yeah, and the vehicles too. We we've I mean, not only have we just brought back some favorites, you know, the little birds back. Yes, please. We love to see it. Yes. <laughs> um, but we've also took a, a really good look at the way in which we approach vehicles, because I think for some vehicles are, are a means to an end. You get in them, you fly from one point to another. We've tried to focus more on what it is that all people are doing in a vehicle when you're actually using them. Yeah, there, there, was, a, there was a notion in the beginning of the product where we said, we want vehicles to be platforms for team play. So um, we wanted to be enablers of great team play. And they've been so in the past, I think, but we just kind of touched upon it. Um, so we're taking it further now with 2042, and that means that these different seats in a vehicle um, have significantly more roles available. You can have a particular seat in a tank, for example, that is a spotter seat. So your friend who's in the spotter seat, uh, his or her job is to actually just spot. Um, and there's, there's, of course, it's a kind of a given with, with cutting edge technology in modern hardware, 360 degree turn turrets for Gunner. I've missed it. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful that it's back. Uh, and it's really cool. And there's there, there's many other ones. There's like anti-air seats. Uh, there's of course the driver seats and the gunner seats and different types of gunner seats, grenade launchers, rocket launchers. Um, there's even one vehicle that can uh, deploy mines on the go. So it's perfect if someone is pursuing you and uh, uh, chasing you and you just put down some mines on the go and you just see them blow up behind you. 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, we um, give it the big frostbite upgrade. We got a new physics, you know, sub engine as part of that. So I think that the like the level of skill that's now in the vehicles, just kind of driving the transport vehicles, yeah. controlling the tanks, it's really cool. Uh, it's a level of kind of you know physicality we haven't had in our previous games, and a level of yeah. control that's you know completely new. Uh, it just it just feels better to maneuver and better to drive, and it's just it's more fun to take them off some you know take it off some sweet jumps as you say. Um, but I mean, if the cool thing about vehicles which I also want to mention is kind of like when you're playing Battlefield, even if you're not a vehicle player, just being around vehicles is awesome. So even if you want to play infantry and you're running around an orbital, for example, and you're, you're on your way to the rockets and you're an idiot like me, so you, don't, you just try to run across the open space. Um, just seeing two transport vehicles, you know, was just coming around the bend and then being engaged in a high speed fight just in front of you. You're a part of that moment, even if you are not driving the actual vehicle. And that's also the, those things we call battlefield moments. They're sometimes they're big and they're bombastic, but just having that moment happen in front of you, it looks like it's a scripted moment almost, but it's two players just ducking it out in two vehicles. Having that, uh, it's just, it's just a, such a great addition. That, that that you you only get in battlefield basically and it really does make all the difference in the world when you you're rising out above the stadium on hourglass and you're looking out across the distance to just see jets and tanks just all over the place it's it's great for battlefield players who've been playing this franchise for a long time oh yeah for sure um but we really are just scratching the surface here there's so much more to tell you on the road ahead. Of course, the 22nd of July, we'll be there at EA Play to show the next experience that's coming to 2042. And then later, Hazard Zone. And we're keeping pretty tight lipped on both of these experiences so far. But what can we tell people about Hazard Zone? And what can they expect from it? Yeah, Hazard Zone is really something that's taking kind of the superpowers of dice the battlefield formula to a new level. It's a high stakes squad based uh, experience. It's not your Battle Royale that you might be expecting. It's something new and a bit more contemporary, I'd say. I'd say so. Uh, um, but I think it is important to call out that this is not a Battle Royale mode. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we're building for Battlefield. It's something that we're building that is ours. But it is really built on those mechanics, those high stakes mechanics that really builds tension as you play and gets you like, you know, those sweaty palms moments when you're just like... But it's also then, you know, combined with Squad play. I mean, we are a squad-based team play shooter, and I'd say there's no other space um, within 2042 where the choices you make in terms of what I choose to bring and what my friends choose to bring, what specialist is my friend playing, what weapon is my friend playing, what gadgetry is my friend playing, that has such an incredibly high importance in Hazard Zone when you're playing this game. So really, really tight squad play, um, really, really um, uh, tight communication is important. Um, and then built around those uh, that tension builder, high stakes type of gameplay. So uh, super excited to talk about this yeah. as we uh, when we're allowed to talk about it in a bit, yes, in a bit, in a bit soon. Um, an another part of this experience, which again we we we've started to talk a little bit about, is live service. So yeah. we we've de we definitely are happy to talk to people about what our approach is so far. So what what are we saying so far? So most importantly we want to make sure that we take the best of the learnings we've had from the likes of say battlefield 5 where we can keep all our players together yeah i mean that was a big big decision we made really early on in the project we don't want to split our community in any way when it comes to gameplay content so all of the new locations will head out to in part of live service you know free for everyone as part of that and then we are introducing a battle pass as part of our seasons we've announced four seasons as part of the first year every season will also come with a specialist the Battle Pass system has two tiers, the free tier and the premium tier. And all of your gameplay hardware you'll of course find in the free tier and in the premium tier, cosmetics and stuff you can use to express yourself across vehicles, weapons and your specialists. Yeah. We'll have plenty more to say on yeah. that before we launch the game. Um, but stick around, we're going to take another look at our gameplay trailer that we debuted this past week at the Xbox Showcase. And when we return, we'll be back with more of the gang from across DICE to chat some more about Battlefield 2042. Them back, but not 
I don't think I'm ever going to get bored of watching that trailer. Um, but welcome back, folks. Um, as promised, we are joined now by more of the gang from DICE. Uh, joining us, we have Marie buscard Granland, associate producer on 2042, Nicole Lee, senior game designer, and Ferris Musmar, associate design director. How are we doing, gang? You realize this is the largest collection of DICE employees that has happened now in what close to a year and a half yeah, it's been north of a year right i think we met yesterday oh it was a thrilling experience humans in the real flesh that can build video games even it's mm -hmm. pretty rad yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you have it on your game dev bingo card that you go back to making video games in your bedrooms was was that something that you expected on your career paths? Something no. that we dreamed about, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been a challenging experience, but at the same time, it showed like a lot of positives of how the team connected to each other and that sort of stuff. And it's really nice to be together again, actually. Like yeah. seeing more of these guys' heads, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Actual heads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 3D. Rendered yeah. in real time. Yeah. 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 High definition. Yeah, 4K and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we obviously just got to take another look at that incredible gameplay trailer that we showed off this weekend. Um, your favorite parts of this, because there's, there's so much cool stuff happening in there, a lot of which is, is work that you guys helped to, to shape up. But, but Marie, like when you're watching that trailer back this weekend, like what was the big thing that got you smiling just seeing it happen there in the big screen? I think just seeing it all come together as a like game really like that you can experience for real uh, i think the last couple of months we have been working on this game so tirelessly and just seeing it now just come together uh to the experience that we kind of envisioned from the beginning is just so thrilling yeah nicole did you have a favorite part looking back on it it's really when you're seeing all those vehicles in action at last because previously whenever you're looking at one of these kinds of trailers you just go okay there's a bunch of infantry there are some scattered vehicle action and this time you have them out there in strength and then you're seeing all that crazy action going on from high altitudes all the way to the ground fighting is just intense and that's what i feel battlefield really is <laughs> ferris your favorite part for me it was the tornado actually because i remember when it was first uh, pitch we saw it on the presentations i was like i'm not sure we'll be able to build this but then when we actually <laughs> see it in software and now we're able to talk about it and show it to people. It's it's very exciting. And it really is exciting as well because I like we had your story from earlier on, Dan, about how it just it changed the gameplay experience. But I mean, we, we all play our play tests, you know, really regularly and, and it is crazy just how many different stories we each kind of have about, you know, these big kind of events that, that happen on the maps. Like Oscar, you You've certainly enjoyed your time wingsuiting around in that thing. Yeah, I mean, I f for some reason, I start every single morning the same way. So I get up early, download the latest build. I then take my kids to school and daycare. And then I sit down and I enjoy a breakthrough round with AI. And there's always like a good five, 10 minutes of just wingsuiting for no apparent reason. <laughs> More than that wingsuiting, it's just pretty rad. <laughs> Love it. Um, let's get back into some more of the details then that we were chatting about just before we watched that trailer. Um, so Ferris, we were chatting earlier on today about progression because we've we've obviously taken lots of different approaches to it over the years, but with this, we've, we've really tried to think about the best possible player experience, haven't we? Especially now with the uh, with the new move towards the specialist system, where uh, the players can actually equip the their weapons all over the different uh, characters. We moved a little bit away from the class system. This allowed us to actually have more streamlined progression, where the player can uh, progress uh, all of their characters technically at the same time, because they're unlocking hardware that they can use on all of them, and they're unlocking vehicles that they can use for all of their specialists. So this helped us a lot. Uh, look Looking at it, looking at a way to streamline it, make it uh, more engaging for the uh, players. Because that really is like the, the the best part of the experience, really. Now, because when we rank up, previously you've as a player targeted that one thing. If I'm going to sit on assault or sit on an assault rifle class and try and work towards that next unlock, but now you find you're you know you're unlocking new equipment. That you, it's making you change the way you think about some of the specialists you maybe haven't played already. You're making you think. Oh, but if I use this now with this specialist, this changes the experience of quite a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's, it's easier to make the jump. Um, like like we mentioned earlier, we've seen in data from previous games that like you know when when people have maxed out a particular class and they 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 it's time to maybe jump to 
to another class to play something, you go like, yeah, but I don't want to use this weapon type, so I'm I'm just not going to. Um, but this time around, with the with the new openness and 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 the more approach to a sandboxy notion of the entire systems, um, it's easier for 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 people to to kind of just jump around and test different things. And if 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 you really have a weapon you're proficient with and you like, you can bring that weapon with you to any of the specialists. You can just try it out. Um, and I think that just lowers the um, the threshold of trying out different things in general. Yeah, it's certainly been that way for me. I mean, I've exclusively avoided the recon class because I'm just a potato sniper. Mm. <laughs> but yet, historically, we've had so many cool gadgets and, and functions available in that kind of class and role. Like, Nicole, has it changed up your kind of play style when you're interacting with the different specialists? I think absolutely. And especially, I always like to talk about Casper when you've got a motion sensor down there and you know there's someone in the area, your situational awareness changes and you can play it both ways, right? On one hand, you can say, I'm going to take a shotgun. Oh, wait, recons don't normally carry shotguns. I got a shotgun now or SMG and you just go in and you start clearing up a room. And then alternatively, if you're like up on a perch somewhere and you say, someone might go in the elevator over there, but I've got a really good perch right now with my sniper rifle. Uh, you just go, oh, there's a motion sensor telling me there's someone behind you can solve a problem. So it's really a different approach to solving these kinds of combat puzzles that just show up from time to time. And I, I think that's a, a huge change, really. And it's such a cool world as well that we get to play in. Like we were chatting about it a lot earlier on, talking about it in relation to our maps uh, and in relation to the, you know, the, the characters and the way that we're kind of approaching storytelling in this game, because this is new for us. Uh, we've obviously had story and reasons to go to places in the past in past games but like how's it been now developing a battlefield game where we're telling so much of this story of no pats and this world that you know we're inheriting in 2042 like, as designers and producers like is it changing your approach to the content that you guys make i think because this time around we also uh, are trying to enrich the uh, because we don't have a single player campaign in 2042 we're infusing the lore of the world via the specialists and via the surrounding uh, elements that you have in the world and we're going to take that even further during the live service so it made us approach uh, growing the lore of the universe in a very uh, different way that is embedded in the in the gameplay you're naturally exposed to the lore of the world as you're playing the game get an understanding kind of why you're there as well and what the specialist that you're playing as why they're fighting is also quite interesting yeah because these no pats the non-patriated they're, they're each fighting for something aren't they because i mean whilst this is it, it can look like a bleak world there's there's definitely a lot of optimism in these no pats and everything they're fighting for yeah we i mean early on in the concept we talked about the notion of hope uh, and the notion of purpose and a notion that's really filled with change and i think we we got the chance now to talk about some of the backstory to this game but that's just really the tip of the iceberg just kudos to everyone in the narrative team, you know, back home. There's just so much work that's gone down into the notepads, to the locations. And as we kind of jump into a live service now, there's a lot of secrets we haven't talked about so far, uh, you yeah. know, behind all this world. So we're, you know, looking forward to taking our place on a journey to explore more about what's actually led up to 2042 and what's next. Yeah. Um, it, it is really exciting, this story, by the way. You'll hear lots more about it from us um, before we go on to launch the game. When you're looking back then at 2042 and all the work we've done so far, because I mean, while it's, it's crazy to think that this last week really has been the first time players are learning about it. We've been living with this secret now for quite a while. Like now that we've reached this kind of checkpoint for us as a team, when you're looking back, like what's the big thing that you're so proud of and, and so excited for players uh, to be able to get to play? Mm. I, I mean, there's so much to really talk about when it comes to this, but I'm, I'm always talking about the, the setting, right? Because you are really dealing with that kind of modern era where there are so many opportunities. And when you have new tech coming in, you can bring that all together. And when I talk about tech, I'm not just talking about uh, military hardware. It's about all the other stuff you have on the processing side. We are able to deliver this in the game. And you're just having this experience that people across different platform generations are able to enjoy and that's something i find that's truly truly exciting and then empowered like mm -hmm. with the new tech as well like we were able to build maps on a bigger scale than before that we were able to add all this like dynamic elements to them that is quite interesting 
and then combined with the all the elements you mentioned and the hardware we brought in like the sandbox has expanded in a very very interesting ways for us that maybe we didn't even foresee it to go to these uh, lengths when we first started actually yeah it's, it's amazing like because daniel you and the team obviously worked so hard to try and map out the experience we're going to build but it's quite incredible really that the instant we start more potential opens up for us and uh, yeah. we really must have evolved so much since that original concept when we sat down those years oh, ago yeah. yeah yeah no it's evolved quite quite some um but i think that's also the nature of battlefield right we always have we also have kind of like a notion of like okay this these are the tools that we're going to give you but we know from experience that every single game we release there's just there's combinations that we haven't really thought of there's things that people are going to do that we haven't really thought of and like sometimes it, it become takes some extreme um some extreme cases but most of the time it's actually just part of that sandbox fun that makes battlefield battlefield um so i'm excited for for 2042 coming out and actually getting in the hands of the players because there's i think there's there's more opportunities in these games to find these kind of crazy moments that we necessarily didn't find in our testing um that people are just going to find when they play uh, so I'm looking forward to that. See what uh, what everyone can can come up with, basically. I mean, it's it's crazy as well because even though there's so many of us from across Dice here in Stockholm here, and again, we're, there's so many more of us just sat at home, kind of watching this live with you guys right now. Um, but it isn't just Dice that's helping to work and and shape this new era of Battlefield. Of course, we've got so many more teams including dice la you've got some really exciting stuff to show us at ea play oscar yeah i mean first you mentioned now we have folks in stockholm in you know gothenburg and guildford in la and you know folks across all over the world actually across electronic arts you know helping building battlefield 2042 but the stuff that's actually getting built out of dice la is quite special uh the team joined our big team meeting i think we broke some kind of zoom world record lots of folks were actually in that meeting uh and they got the chance to show the latest update from that experience I think our chat kind of exploded. Yeah. Uh, the team's super pumped, and we're just looking forward to July 22nd at EA Play Live when we get the chance to show the world what the Dice LA team have been working on. It's quite special, I'd say. It's going to be good. Uh, I'm big time excited what our friends at Dice LA have to show you at EA Play. So make sure you stick it in your diaries. July 22nd, I promise, if you're watching this, you don't want to miss it. So Marie, Nicole, Ferris, the boss man, Dan, it's been great seeing you and chatting to you today and, of course, taking everyone a bit behind the scenes on all the work that's being done on 2042. We really do have so much more to show you. So subscribe, bang on the notifications, and from me and the gang working across 2042, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. Thank you, Silver. Hey, Google, stop.
Hello, everyone. I'm Shina Takahashi, and I'll be your guide for today's Nintendo Direct. Hello, I'm Yoshiaki Koizumi, and I'll be your guide as well. The Nintendo Switch system is now in its fifth year, and many people around the world are playing games on it. Nintendo Switch is being enjoyed by a wide range of players spanning all ages and all levels of gaming experience. Thank you all very much. We've been able to offer a wide variety of games on the system, not just from Nintendo, but also from our many development and publishing partners. I hope that each of you watching this Nintendo Direct will be able to find a game that suits your personal tastes. Today, we have news on upcoming Nintendo Switch games, and we'll be focusing on a selection of games releasing this year. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, to begin, please take a look at this video. They say, the wonder is, not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now, part of our family. What you found, it's the key to unlocking everything. This is all we've been working towards. Good. We've come to the beginning of humanity's final journey. Prepare for departure. Graviton loop array full check. Your space lane is clear. That's why we're here. Make engines go. Ignition. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are go for launch. Join the battle. Surprise! I'll go over the details at a later date, so please sit tight. For today, though, we've prepared a short video to showcase Kazuya's moves in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Please take a look.
like Tekken. No, it's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'll talk about the fighter more in a future presentation. We still have to record it first, actually. A new day is the air date us. is shown below. Please a stay tuned. A new generation built to fight. Together, Thank we you, are Mr. unstoppable. New fighter, Kazuya, will join the fight in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Please look forward to seeing how Kazuya, who has experienced many harsh battles across the Tekken series, will fight in this game. Alright, let's continue with our first batch of Nintendo Switch headlines. Your choices matter in these promotional, supernatural tales. Killing spree. Star-Lord's daring combat style and encounter iconic and original Marvel characters. You'll call the shots for the unpredictable Guardians as you face cosmic threats to save the galaxy. You got this, probably. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy blasts onto Nintendo Switch October 26th. Things. Worms everywhere. In this real-time arena-based shooter, You'll squish your invertebrate opponents in 32-player cross-platform combat, play in daily challenges, battle modes, and seasonal events to worm your way up the ranks. And I will Plus, die the patchwork bear out the Ascending launches on Nintendo Switch September 30th. Return to the funny, charming, and quirky world of Two Point County. In the wholesome management sim Two Point Campus, you'll build and run your very own university the way you want it. Lots of creative tools are at your disposal to make the school yours and take your educational empire to the next level. Enrollment for Two Point Campus starts on Nintendo Switch next year. A beloved series rolls into its 20th anniversary this year. What exactly is your plan? Hold hands, sing songs around the fire. I know just the songs. Resolver, Daddy. To take down Castillo, Eguerrilla needs the right tool for the right job. You're talking? As a stealth operation, I got you covered. Taking out a high value target? I have just what you need. You wanna blow Go shit bananas, 
with one Super Monkey Ball and Mercedes. Mercedes rolls on the Nintendo Switch on October 5th. It's a blast from parties past, and you're invited. Ready for another round of Mario Party Mayhem? Of course you are! It's a superstar collection of Mario Party boards and minigames. Live it up on five what? classic boards from the Nintendo 64 era, including Wait, Peach's birthday cake and Space Link. Hey, whatever you need to get the Each job done. Each packed with zany events guaranteed to keep you on your toes. And when you say zany, we mean it. Jump. Next time I see Next you. blocks. I want to play with a crazy bike like this. In the hilarious over-the-top mini games, all of which support buttons. With 100 mini games from the Mario Party series catalog, you'll have a blast in this all-star fun fest. Here's a little party favor. All game modes work with online play. I like how you guys are Even if you're partying solo, you can randomly match with other so party goers worldwide. Playing a board game online with friends, save your progress mid-game, grab a snack, then resume the festivities. Evil. Stickers are also Best available survive. to communicate with others. It's time to party in Mario Party in Superstars, launching on the Nintendo Switch system October 29th. Pre-orders begin he today must on be Nintendo stopped. At all costs. What do you think? The film shows its next Currently, we're working hard on our latest game in the Metroid Prime series, Metroid Prime 4, which we previously announced. But today, we're to new entry in the Metroid franchise. Please take a look. Jack Sparrow. But I suspect you already knew that. Because of the treasure Jack stole, was the a dark for the first followed him here. And if it's not stopped, this years, world will sink the into shadow. As the name Dread implies, this is a Metroid game with a new feel showcasing a variety of threats that Samus will encounter. It's scheduled to be released on October 8th, so it won't be too long until launch. On that same day, we'll also be releasing amiibo figures for Samus and the Emmy, the robot seen in the video. Let's move Cam on to more said, Nintendo Switch headlines. Sorry about the audio. These familiar franchises are back on Nintendo Cam Switch. said, I had a mixed beat. Get ready to get down in the latest Just Dance game. Hey, 
hit the dance floor in Just Dance 2022. Launching on Nintendo Switch November 4th. The arcade smash hit Cruisin' Blast is speeding onto Nintendo Switch. Blast your way through nearly 30 over-the-top tracks. Up to four players can race together, so pick your favorite vehicle and hit the road. Cruisin' Blast launches as a console exclusive on Nintendo Switch this fall. It's the ultimate Dragon Ball Z experience. Relive the story of Goku and other Z fighters through four sagas in this action RPG. Saiyan, protect the Earth from an invasion by Vegeta and Nappa. Frieza, take a stand against the evil Emperor. Cell, battle the androids in a fight to the death. Majin Buu, an epic showdown with the most fearsome foe. Along with the main story, you can explore the vast world of Dragon Ball Z. Hey, why not help out the locals? Or collect ingredients for delicious meals. You could always train to acquire new skills, too. There are lots of things to keep you busy. The boss battle episodes, A New Power Awakens Parts 1 and 2 is also included. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot plus A New Power Awakens set punches its way onto Nintendo Switch September 24th. Grab a golf club and get ready to tee off. The Mario Golf Super Rush game launches soon. Here's a quick glimpse into each of the modes. Standard Golf. Take your time to read the wind and terrain on the greens. Hit different types of shots and aim for under par. Nice bird. Speed Golf. Smack your ball, then chase after it. Be the first to get your ball in the hole. Outpace your rivals with special dashes and special shots. Battle Golf. Duke it out over nine flag marked holes in an obstacle filled arena. Capture three flags to win. Golf Adventure. Go from rookie to pro with your me character. The golfing challenges that await may surprise you. And here's some news. Free updates are planned for future release, including additional courses and playable characters. The fairway's almost open, so set your tee time and get ready to ace those shots in Mario Golf Super Rush, swinging onto the Nintendo Switch system June 25th. Pre-orders are available now on Nintendo eShop. Ready for the ride of a lifetime? Welcome to the vast and vibrant world of Monster Hunter. As a rider in this RPG adventure, you'll explore diverse landscapes by riding your Monstie, a monster companion. Gather materials such as honey and ore, then use them to craft items for your journey. But beware of the many monsters roaming about. Some are docile, but others may suddenly ambush you. To fight, you'll team up with your monstie and use weapons and skills to overwhelm enemy monsters in turn-based battles. Win, and you'll be rewarded with their materials, which can be forged into new weapons and armor. Hey, is that an egg? You might be able to hatch a new monstie. Incredibly powerful monsties can also hatch from rare eggs. Need more traveling buddies? Join up with friends for co-op multiplayer quests and battles. Buckle up, Ryder. It's going to be a real monster of an adventure. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin soars onto Nintendo Switch July 9th. You can play the free demo on June 25th and carry over your save data to the full game. Here's a new game from the head of a certain company. <laughs> Did you miss me? Hey, what do you mean? Who am I? It's a me, Wario. And it's a finally ready, a brand new game from my company. Check it out. You get to control me. Time to do this. 
Look at me go. Quack rats. Check out these chumps. They came back and they have wonderful new talents. Throw that stick thing. Mm, not the bad. Use the spinny, what you might call it. Ha! Nailed it! Same micro game, different abilities. Wah! I almost forgot some big news. Two people can play together at the same time. So play nice, or else. <laughs> Eh? Not nice. All right, you. Yes, you. The one watching this. Better get ready for some micro game mayhem. <laughs> the WarioWare Get It Together game launches exclusively on the Nintendo Switch system September 10th. Pre orders begin today on Nintendo eShop. What you just saw was the trailer for WarioWare Get It Together. In the latest installment of this series, there are new microgames that let you control Wario and his friends. There is also a two-player co-op mode, which greatly expands the gameplay. It's releasing in the near future, so stay tuned! Next, please take a look at this. As a high school student living in Tokyo, your life is fairly normal. But that reality is upended after you get pulled into a different dimension. Another Tokyo exists, a post-apocalyptic world where angels and demons reside. Suddenly, you fuse with a mysterious figure, gaining the power to fight demons. What lies ahead in this alternate realm? <laughs> now transformed into a sprawling demon infested wasteland though friendly demons do exist here many are hostile and will attempt to destroy you harness your newfound powers to fight demons using a command based system finding their weak point is key by targeting it the number of consecutive actions you can perform in a combo will increase though demons are formidable opponents. <laughs> you may be able to recruit them via negotiations, which begin when you open a conversation with them. If a negotiation is successful, a demon will become a powerful ally. In some cases, by rejecting a demon's request, they may feel motivated and join you as an ally. Demons that do join will fight alongside you and grow stronger. By fusing demon allies, another demon can be created. The newly fused demon's innate abilities will vary, granting you a powerful ally customized to your needs and play style. Challenge the many demons roaming this post-apocalyptic world by harnessing the power of your own. What destiny will you choose? Shin Megami Tensei 5 will launch exclusively on Nintendo Switch November 12th. Pre-orders for the physical version begin June 21st. That was the latest trailer for Shin Megami Tensei 5 from Atlas. This is the newest game in the series. Please look forward to future updates. Let's see a few more Nintendo Switch headlines. Celebrate 10 years of Danganronpa in despair. 
ahem, ahem, testing, testing, mic check, one, two, this is a test of the school broadcast system. <laughs> Three games in the deadly Rampa series are coming to Nintendo Switch. I am this school. Monokuma, the self-proclaimed school headmaster, has trapped you and other high school students in a game of literal life and death. Unfortunately, the only way out of the school and this lethal game is to betray the other students. And so it begins. A body has been discovered! When a student meets their demise, a class trial will take place to reveal the culprit. You're the culprit, aren't you, Mew? Tanya, I had no idea. They probably moved the body there. Use the evidence you've gathered to refute contradictions and find the guilty party. Sneak attack. Yo, it's wrong. Are you okay? Plus, the board game from Rampa V3 Killing Harmony has been expanded into a standalone game. Rampa S Ultimate Summer Camp, an all-star cast of characters from the Rampa series will come together to battle at a tropical resort. Who's the strongest of them all in this hey. ultimate beach brawl? The four-game collection Rampa Decadence launches as a physical exclusive on Nintendo Switch later this year. All four games will also be individually available on Nintendo eShop. We hope you're not afraid of ghosts. In this horror adventure game, you'll uncover the mysteries surrounding the ethereal but deadly Mount Hikami believed to be at the center of many disappearances. Ghosts frequent this mountain. Your only defense is a camera that can repel and cast them out. Face your fears as you explore a variety of unsettling locations. This spine-chilling story features various protagonists, letting you experience the game from different perspectives. New costumes and photo modes are included in this version. Can you investigate Mount Hikami? and stay alive. Fatal Frame, Maiden of Black Water, creeps onto Nintendo Switch this year. These games and DLC are coming soon, some even today. Your war is not over. Raise hell in the first campaign expansion for Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 1. Deeper and more challenging combat awaits as you eliminate Hell's newest threats in demon-infested ruins and rain-swept terrain. The fate of the cosmos is in your hands. Get slaying when this campaign expansion launches on Nintendo Switch later today. Get ramped up for two iconic skateboarding games fully remastered in HD. Skate to era-defining jams as the legendary Tony Hawk and a roster of new and returning pros. Take your sessions on the go with all the original game modes and compete locally or online to show off your tricks against other skaters. Drop in to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, launching on Nintendo Switch June 25th. Pre-orders are available now on Nintendo eShop. After 4,000 years, Sateki, the Witch Queen, has risen from the dead and only one group of heroes can stop her. The Strange Brigade. In this thrilling adventure, you'll blast through an army of mummified monstrosities while solving puzzles in booby-trapped dungeons. Go it alone or team up with other daring adventurers in local wireless co-op and online play. Expect the unexpected when Strange Brigade launches on Nintendo Switch later today. It's a new adventure of cosmic proportions. Mario and his friends will team up with the Rabbids once again to restore order to the galaxy. Our heroes must stop a mysterious new evil from plunging the universe into chaos. Rabbit Rosalina joins them. Wait, is she bored already? Explore planets filled with quirky residents and even quirkier secrets. And in this fresh take on the tactical genre, 
our heroes can run freely around the battlefield, creating new strategic and chaotic possibilities. So aim for victory with a little help from your friends. Wait, who's that? <laughs> well, one thing's certain. This is gonna be one heck of a galactic adventure. Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope launches into space or onto Nintendo Switch next year. Memorable characters and vibrant gameplay are in store as you lead the commanding officers to victory. Play the first two Advance Wars campaigns in Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Marching on to Nintendo Switch this holiday. Pre-orders begin today on Nintendo eShop. How is everything? All right, this next segment will be our last announcement of the day. Please take a look. Hello there, I'm Eiji Aonuma, producer of the Legend of Zelda series. What you've just seen is a trailer for the first wave of DLC for the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity expansion pass from Koei Tecmo Games. It will follow Link and his allies through more battles that took place 100 years prior to the events of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I hope you'll look forward to it. I have a few more things to share with you all today. We'll begin with the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD game, which launches next month. You'll immerse yourself in the role of Link by using two Joy-Con controllers for intuitive motion controls, or by playing in handheld mode, wielding the sword via flicking the stick and button-only controls. This game depicts the oldest era in the Legend of Zelda series, the story of how it all began. What is the origin of the Master Sword? Why did a woman named Zelda become the legend for future generations? These will all be unraveled in this game. We hope you're looking forward to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Next up. Here's a little something you might like. This is a Game & Watch system that lets you play three games in the Legend of Zelda series. This year, the original Legend of Zelda game reaches its 35th anniversary. While we don't have any campaigns or other Nintendo Switch games planned, we've been working on this Game & Watch system as a special item to help mark the occasion and reflect fondly on the earliest days of The Legend of Zelda. It will come with the first game in the series, The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, and the Game Boy version of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening game, 
as well as a special version of the Game & Watch title Vermin, starring Link as the playable character. So that's four games on one system, from longer Legend of Zelda games to the pick-up-and-play game Vermin. In addition, regarding the watch functionality for the Game & Watch system, we've added a playable clock based on the Legend of Zelda, and an interactive timer themed after Zelda II The Adventure of Link. You can play with both of them by taking control of Link. We hope you'll enjoy playing this Game & Watch system whenever and wherever you'd like. All right, here's the last thing we have to show you. This is the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Two years have passed since we first announced this game, and we've been unable to share anything with you in that time. However, development has been steadily progressing. For today, we've prepared some new footage to show a bit more of the game. Please take a look. So, what did you think? This time around, the setting for the adventure has been expanded to include the skies above Hyrule. We'd like to ask you to wait a bit longer. We're aiming for a 2022 release, so I hope you'll look forward to it. How was that? That's all for this Nintendo Direct. We are diligently continuing development on a number of other games we didn't show today. I hope you'll continue looking forward to what's in store on Nintendo Switch. Thank you for watching. Hi everyone. I'm Doug Bowser from Nintendo of America, and I'm here with Nate Bildorf, who leads our Treehouse team. As you know, at Nintendo, we're all about creating experiences that deliver surprises and smiles. And I have to say, I found myself smiling through that entire presentation, thinking about how many unique games we'll be able to share with everyone in the weeks and months ahead. Nate, that last clip was incredible. So many questions, where do we start? What did you think? Oh, well, Doug, they had me at the first mysterious red tendril. You know what a massive Zelda fan I am. Um, but that's 2022. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm frankly just looking forward to seeing all the games that are in the pipeline just over the next couple months for Nintendo Switch. We've got Mario Party Superstars, WarioWare Get It Together, the expansion for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, Mario Golf Super Rush, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, and of course, Metroid Dread. I am just not going to be getting any work done, and you should know that. Well, that's okay. I think I may be in the sa same camp. And Mario Golf Super Rush launches in just a few weeks on June the 25th. By the way, Nate, do you know why Luigi brings two pairs of pants to the golf course with him? Doug, are we doing the dad joke thing again? We are. <laughs> in case he gets a hole in one. 
<laughs> but seriously, everyone, this game is just packed with content. You can play in standard golf mode, but then there's also speed golf, battle golf, the golf adventure mode, and the option to play with buttons or motion controls. And you can play with up to four people locally or online. I can say this one is definitely going to be taking up the majority of my summer gaming time. Oh yeah, Yo, you and me both. Um, and there's plenty more to come. Um, and as for today, our E3 show is just getting started. Um, next up, we have, of course have Nintendo Treehouse Live and we'll be kicking off our first segment with a very special guest, Yoshio Sakamoto, who is the producer of Metroid Dread. And he's gonna be sharing his insights on, I can't believe I'm saying this, Let's take a minute to uh, get set up here. Yeah. We are back and set up with motion controls to play a little bit of speed golf for player. All right. All right. So we're going to start it up. Uh, we're playing on local wireless, and it's going to be two players on uh, each system. So there are two systems, two games, two players on each. I will be selecting my me character. I'm going to play as King Baba because I'm a big fan that he is back. <laughs> I'm Daisy. And I'm Waluigi because of that outfit. <laughs> I mean, Fair enough. Sensible. And we're going to be playing on Bonnie Greens, which again is the birthplace of uh, golf Love in the Mushroom Kingdom. Yep. Sounds perfect. All right. Are you guys nice ready friendly to lose? game of golf. Right. Oh, well. And right. as you might see, we're, we're, we're standing because we're playing with motion controls and. Uh, the, this version of Speed Golf is very special because it's now playable in motion controls, but also you're able to control the character on the course, which you'll see here in a bit. So uh, it, it is really fun. It's a little chaotic. Really, really chaotic, but yeah. really zany and crazy and I fun. I live for so. chaos. Let's go for it, guys. All right, here we go. And go. All right, all right, all right. I can work with that. Let's go. So you see the stamina hey, bar on each character, below each character. So we're using the motion controls to jog, but we could also press the L button if our stamina bar is still green to do a special dash. Which comes in handy if you run into sheep or something on the course. Make or way, each other. <laughs> or each other. Or each other. That'd be explosive on his way. <laughs> <laughs> when King Bobama's I mean, coming by, make room. The benefit to running, you know, is we are playing speed golf. All about how fast you can get through the course. Nice yeah, so each each stroke is worth 30 seconds on your score. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Meanwhile, Luigi have a war here. Stop. Oh boy. Mm. <laughs> all right, all right, I got this. I got this. 
Daisy's got to take a breather. Woo. Oh. Here we go. All right. All right. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Stuck. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. I'm practicing my swing here before I hit the ball because I want to see how much power I give it. Oh, come on, oh, Bertie! Wow. Oh, I? so close. <laughs> While Luigi's finding his own adventure. Yeah. All right. I'll take I think a car. I'm in the Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. Nicely done, Kay. Wait, what's taking you guys so long? Hey, Kay. hey, hey. <laughs> I am wanting. Whoa. Too oh. strong. Too, too strong. Too strong. Too strong. Hit the pin oh. right after each other. Oh. <laughs> I went really crazy with my my you were special too dash. Too. You I was. Calm down. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, All right. All right. Path. Well done, guys. King Bob Bomb, though. So beautiful. Okay, here we go. So majestic. <laughs> he really Thank is majestic. You. Oh. 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 oh, it's don't okay. Be sad. We'll make okay, it up. Get him next Don't worry. Guy. Two more holes. You're we still got warming this. up, you know. Teresa and Rob have been playing this whole time, but you and I, you know. <laughs> yeah, He's you wearing challenging shoes up. for this, to be fair. <laughs> All right. I got to. Prove my game here. I'd like to see you try. Let's do this. <laughs> so in speed golf, the uh, we don't all start af after the first hole. We don't all start at the same time. Uh, whoever did the best has to wait the longest to, to go and, and give people a chance to catch up. Yep. So I'm still waiting. All right, here we go. Woo! Go go! All right, run, Daisy. <laughs> Oh, I went too over. far. I went too far. <laughs> you need to stop doing that. I do. I get really excited with the special dashes. Oh, oh man. Well, and, the flag. and in speed golf, you don't really so want to close. spend a lot of time reading greens and things. So you kind of just have to hope. Ugh. Come on, baby. Oh, too far. Oh, man. Get out of my this way. Is not Long ball. Well. Too far. Okay. This is not boating well. I'm playing hopscotch oh. with the flag right now. <laughs> I am too. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Nicely done, Teresa. Double boat. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was. That actually. Uh, maybe next time. That worked out in my favor, hopefully. Okay. No pressure. A little it bit is of not, pressure. It is not. Our character's fault. It is us. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Double bogey. All Daisy right. feels me. Here we Daisy go. Feels no, me. we got it. We got it. Hey, we, we got, got it this. We got this. Okay. On. That was not my best hole. Shaking it off. So besides, wow. so we're all even because we're also playing for time, not just the number of strokes. So we'll see. We we'll see how we fare now in this last one. This we last have a one. Four way tie. <laughs> this last one will be it. Love it. Oh gosh. Oh, no. Okay. I have to wait until you guys go. All right. Well, I like having the green to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for a nice jog. Yeah. Nothing more refreshing. <laughs> Woo! Catch up with you, jokers. Oh, boy. Ah! You almost hit me with your I golf ball. Bye, Luigi. Oh! <laughs> All right, How what have you? we got here? Ah, oh, missed. Oh, oh, oh. Showing you. Oh, let's saucy. Here. All right. All right. What? That oh. was probably a little bit too much. Oomph. Nice I love the special dashes. They just sound so satisfying when they trigger. <laughs> they do. And then it does. It does because uh, it's an energy gauge. It does go off. So you'll just have to run in order for it to build up again. So you can use it. Uh, okay. Oh, um, let's go like. Oops. We're just gonna try to power to through there. those trees. That's good. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Yeah, I'm just gonna power through those trees too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm it's... sure that will end well for you. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey. The trees can None be of that we established left. this. <laughs> Did we though? <laughs> I'm gonna practice this. Okay. Or do I want to just practice go now? Shot. Because I tend to yeah. be a little bit too excited. A little excited. bit of practice shot. No, that's too much. Uh, just no. like that. All right, okay. come on, Daisy. Come on. You've got some catching up to do, girly. I practice shot. 
Be my me. Pardon me, King coming through. Oh no! Oh no! There Too much go. oomph. Woo, uh, bar. Woo, same here. Oh, oh you guys. Bogey. Take a good bar. You guys. Bogey. Not too bad. Not too bad. You got this, Teresa. I <laughs> hope it. so. Let's see. Good shot. That was pretty nice. Yeah. What? Nice. All right. Ooh. I matched Daisy <laughs> here. Let's see. <laughs> well, you're a minute longer than me, but. <laughs> yeah, that time was not in my favor. So I think. Yep. Oh, look at Ooh. that. Best dress done. award wow. goes to. Oh, and also the we best win. dress <laughs> award goes to. <laughs> Nicely done. Well uh, done. Yeah. Well done. A pause all around. Yay, golf, Congratulations. Golf, 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 claps, golf claps, golf claps, golf claps. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. Yeah, thanks for joining me on that adventure, guys. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for having us. Thanks for guiding us through a little bit of uh, Mario Golf Super Rush. Yeah. So before we close, we do want to mention that there will be uh, future updates for this game. So stick around for more information on uh, what that is. Um, and then as uh, Brandon had mentioned at the beginning of the sim, the game is about to release in just a couple of weeks. So that's really exciting. Can't wait for this game to come out. Yeah, it comes out uh, June 25th, Nintendo Switch system. So uh, yeah, that's it for this segment. Thanks for joining us uh, for a little bit of Mario Golf Super Rush, but don't go anywhere. There's more Treehouse Live, Nintendo Treehouse Live coming up. We're gonna show you some Shin Megami Tensei V. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I am Demetrius, and I'm joined with Ethan. Hello. Hey, and we're here to play Shin Megami Tensei Five. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm excited to ah, show this, this one series. Off. So why don't we start out, Ethan? What is Shin Megami Tensei Five? So uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. A little bit of a mouthful to say. I do love saying it though. Uh, <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei Five is the latest uh, game in a really long-running uh, JRPG series. Um, this is a series that got its start uh, way back when on uh, the Super Famicom, uh, and. I've loved that this series has been getting um, a lot of attention and appreciation um, in the West, uh, outside of Japan in recent years, um, and uh, that this new game is is coming to Nintendo Switch. Um, and before we dive in too much more, I mean, can we just take a moment to appreciate glorious this fantastic, glorious hair that I wish I <laughs> on had our, on our main character here? <laughs> Um, not not every day that you get a character with such fantastic hair. Yeah, rather um, than <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Listen. Uh, so, um, you know, just to just to talk about a, a few of the the kind of defining features of this series. Um, as you can see, we've got kind of real world elements mashed together with the fantastical and and the mythological, as we will see, uh, even in our character. Um, you know, but. If we look closely, we see things like uh, Japanese written on the pavement here, um, and uh, we see uh, you know buildings or what look like buildings and and buses and cars. But also everything uh, seems to be in a bit of a jumble. Um, things are not looking right. Um, not at all. Clearly something went wrong. Something's definitely gone wrong. Um, but that that mix of of real world and uh, fantastical is definitely like a hallmark of Shin Megami Tensei. Um, picking Super up some some that. orbs here, um, getting a, a nice little uh, heal up on my HP and my MP, um, and going to stop by these nice little vending machines, which are, it's great that these are still operational. Oh, you, you just need a drink. Yep. That's right. just, just some Pick water. Pick up a, right? a can of juice. It's really hot um, out. You're, you're... Dust covered box. 
Okay, that's, that's a box. Sure. Uh, Fun use for it. <laughs> not what I typically associate with vending machines, but um, <laughs> we are, of course, playing the Japanese version right now. I'll be doing some translation uh, as we go through. Demons are another uh, big part of the Shin Megami Tensei series, and we're going to meet one of them right now. Um, you battle demons, but you also do a fair bit of talking with demons, and uh, this demon is going to tell us a bit about where we are. So... Uh, I think it was about 20 years ago uh, that uh, this place uh, became a new netherworld. Mm. All right. Um, sounds intriguing. Um, and up until that point, uh, humans had lived here. It was a world humans had lived in. Um, and nobody really knows why it, it became a netherworld. Okay. So, uh, you know, I could, I could talk to this demon because uh, of the, the word balloon above its head, but... We're actually being approached here, and I think we're going to get in our first battle. <laughs> That's right. Um, that, uh, that demon was on a mission. Oh, and you got two slots. Okay. So while uh, Ethan focuses here, allow me to explain the, the battle system. It's what's known as the press turn system, and which is really, really cool. It's essentially about exploiting the enemy's weakness and trying to find out what it is. And when you do, you can actually get extra turns or actions back, allowing you to continue to attack or pressing the advantage, pressing turn. So really, really fun stuff. So what Ethan here is trying to find is the weakness. There we go. Oh, yeah. There is one. So we have an additional action back. So you'll see the turn will continue on Ethan's side, allowing him to continue attacking. What's really fun is if you're able to figure out all of your enemy's weaknesses, you can exploit them and just attack nonstop. Or, well, not nonstop, but enough to maybe even wipe them out before they can even really attack you, which is mm -hmm. really awesome. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. That was some slime-on-slime slime, uh, battling there. Because um, I've got a slime in my party. Um, and let's see. I so think... You know the weakness is, I think, fire. Yeah, so this is uh, Agi, which is a fire ability. Um, and I can see... So, down below, I can see all these elemental affinities. Um, when I started against that other enemy that I defeated, that was an enemy I hadn't encountered before, so they were all question marks. Um, turned out uh, wind worked well against uh, that enemy. The slime has a bunch of weaknesses, so fire, ice, lightning, wind um, are all say. its we uh, weak against all of those. Now, I, I just want to see then I wouldn't use fire on that particular... Oh, too late. Oh, no, what happened? <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. I was, I was just trying to min-max here. <laughs> you could have you damaged you that min -maxing, one. You really? got another turn, took them both out because they were both weak. But that's right. Oh, we, 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 okay. We, we're, we're good. We're fine. Okay. We do call you Battlemaster D for a reason. <laughs> Um, even though you I still just got it, up. because I think this will give you. Oh, you wow! Okay, because like the slime, fortunately, has a lot of weaknesses, so you're kind of you're good picking a lot of different things. But um, okay, so I have actually leveled up here with my my main character. Um, we get a kind of a look at the the stat screen you see when you level up, um, and. One thing I'm going to get is uh, a point to put into one of my five different um, kind of abilities down here. So I have strength, endurance, uh, magic, uh, agility, and luck. And my luck is currently just at eight, and so I'm going to use my point to bring that uh, in line with the rest of them. So we'll have nines across the board. Um, so I raise my luck there. Let's see. I hear I hear a demon somewhere. I think it was. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, up there in front of yeah. you. Yeah. There you go. So you got to pay attention to where they are, and you know, folks who are who are familiar with this series will will notice that for the first time with this game, we're able to see the enemies uh, on kind of the maps that I'm Which that I'm making fantastic. my way around. Yep. And since I just got into battle, I'm gonna run past this one, um, which I can do, um, you know, by being able to see it as opposed to having just random battles. Um, run down here to this. Uh, Kind of decrepit looking train track situation. Um, again, just kind of getting a, a view at our ruined surroundings. Clearly, again, something very went wrong. yeah, surreal, weird stuff going on. Netherworld, apparently, some kinds of enemies up there. I'm gonna keep on trucking down here. Um, These are looking good. Yep. Um, we're just gonna kind of make our way through this little valley. Yeah, and I think there's some. Yeah, there's a couple new demons coming up here. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Those look like mandrakes to yeah, me. Yeah, I think so. so yeah, yeah. Totally. I can also, like, use my sword to start one of these battles, um, and that'll make sure that uh, that I get to go first. Which is great. Or not so much, apparently. Hold on. Um, 
so I was actually going to show this off. I had intended to anyway. Um, demon negotiation is, you know, talking with demons like you do. It's a big part of the Shin Megami uh, Tensei series. And I was planning on talking to this Mandrake, but it had started a conversation with me, um, which I have not seen before. So let's see what it wants to say. So it's asking me for money right off the bat. Okay. Um, if I give it money, uh, how it'll, much money? It'll overlook whatever apparently I've done to oh, offend it this time. 200. 200. Money. I've got 914. I'm going to say go for it, Ethan. Okay. Yeah. So I can agree or I can say no um, and, and say, you know, get out of here. Uh, but we'll, we'll agree this time. <laughs> Uh oh, wait, but it wants something else. See, this is the problem. It's always something. <laughs> the problem with mandrakes. Wait, it wants more money. See? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, now it wants 98 you know, more. We, we got, we got, we got a, a nice amount. Okay. Loosen the purse strings a little bit more. It is still asking <laughs> for more money. Okay, no, 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 no. Uh, I think I, I think I actually misunderstood that. It said, it said, it basically it'll see me again. Um, let's, you know, oh, yeah, let's try this. One we're gonna time. try it one more time because <laughs> that, that went unexpectedly. But that's the fun part, though. That's the negotiation side. You just yeah. don't easily, uh, you know, recruit demons. You, right. you actually have to think about how you're gonna interact with everyone. It's really, really fun. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose talk from my my menu this time and uh, and do. Do the con conversing from my end, um, oh, and we'll you see. lost all that maca. So I know, and, yeah, lost that money, and he just like was like, okay, I'm gonna let you be. It was like, what? Okay, um, I feel so he's he's approached. What are we gonna do? Okay, so we have a couple options here. We can just be quiet, kind of be quiet and and be silent. We can glare, uh, or we can just not move. So what do you think? Uh, not react. Be silent. Okay, we'll take the silent approach. Uh, so wait, are you saying that I can't be near you? No. So wait, then you're saying we can't be friends? Oh no. Okay, oh. so negotiations have broken down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never know what these these demons are gonna say. Um, so while I, I can't really negotiate with my pixie and my slime, so. I am going to attack, because um, it is still my turn. Um, and we'll see. Maybe we can continue our negotiations. Well, we also have another demon, round. too, to talk to. That's true. What I'm worried about is that they attack the slime. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they did not. No, no. I know. Okay, Pixie got... Okay, we're okay with that. We're okay with that. Of a, a shocking experience there. Okay, yeah. so um, we are going to try talking to the other Mandrake, and we'll see if we have any other luck here. What was the Mandrake that took all our money? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that one back. Okay, so this Mandrake is saying, hey, um, can I pull off your arms and legs? Uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, and this is basically my choices here are no way or only if I can do it back to you, <laughs> which I'm not sure how that works, but what do you think? I'll let this one go for you. Either. I'm gonna say, hey, I, only I, if I can do it back. I, I would agree. Uh, oh, this, so you're saying to me like, oh, this this one's got some this one's got some fire. This one's uh, all right. Yeah, kind of feisty. Um, Maybe so join us. If I were to die, what would you do? The Mandrake says, and I can say I wouldn't care, or I'd be really sad or bummed out. Really sad. Yeah. I don't see anything die. Okay. Well then. Be nice to me, why don't you? Now, what should I do? It's saying, it's still wondering. Um, it wants just a little bit of our HP. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. Okay. Um, we so... can always heal with our pixie. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yes. Again, we have options. We can kind of play the tough guy if we want. Oh, nine. Nine. We can, we can spare that. <laughs> this one wants money, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. 205. Oof, I mean, that's. Go f we got we can't six. stop now. We can't yeah, stop yeah. now. We negotiating. Okay. Huh, I think that'll do it. Uh thanks. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Okay, there cool. we go. So <laughs> only cost as you can like see, 700. Um negotiations with demons as you might imagine are kind of unpredictable. Um but we convinced this mandrake to join our party, which is awesome. 
So now we've got a party of four. Uh, your table is ready. <laughs> and we are going to continue going, <laughs> I guess. Um, and yeah, the other there mandrakes are like, see? just trying to follow me. We're not going to let that happen. There you go. Um, so we're going to go down here. Yeah, you're good. You always got to check, though, because like, it's still coming. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk to this this guy. Do love the the enemy design uh, in this game and this series in general is, yeah. is fantastic. Excellent, excellent um, demon design. So humans uh, lived lived here uh, for a long time, um, but as you can see, the uh, this town's just changed uh, completely, and used to have buildings everywhere, um, but now not so much. Um, so, not watch, sure. Watch oh, yeah, I know, right? I know. Oh, gosh, I'm getting stuck. You're good. Okay. So You're good. Look. Now watch him, watch you you never know. You never know. There, there's those in front of you. I know. I know there's there's look at them. Look at them stare at you like, sup. <laughs> just mean mugging <laughs> across the way. Okay, so now we've got this demon floating in this little pot. Um, so, hey, the battle that took place here was really incredible. Did you take part in it? Uh, I don't think so. Wait, you don't know about it? This is the all that, that stuff that kicked off here 18 years ago. It was this, this massive battle between demons and angels. It was super incredible. But wait, what side did end up winning, it says. Huh. Sounds okay. like a right to the party. All right. What does this one have to say? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. Look oh, at we that. We got two. Look at that. They're on their way. Don't okay. forget to run. All right, Hold on. Focus on the Don't panic. Don't panic. Yeah, yeah we got this. I do like that they let me have a conversation, though. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Uh, there is a massive rock-like guy up ahead. I think I see. And if you try to battle him, he's going he's gonna to stomp you in a second. That might be him up there. Yeah. Um, well, I still think we should probably go for it. I do, but too. Step one is to get away from yeah, we these gotta, guys. We're not interested in finding them. We want so, the other one. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do our little, our little dash here, which yeah. I love. Um, run away. Run right, far they're, away. They're. They gave See up. Ya. That's good. Perfect. Take a breather here at this uh, little vending machine stop. Um, we got another dust-covered box <laughs> and another can of juice. All right, that's good. Yeah. Um, so I guess, all right. Bring shall it on! We? Bring on the challenge. We got this. Massive rock guy up here. Okay. Uh, that's pretty big. Uh, so I guess I'll try and start the battle with my oh, wow. sword. Oh, he doesn't sound happy. Oh, nice. I think I got that in. Yeah, I think you did too. Okay. So we get to go first. We do have the four, uh, four characters now. Right. Um, now let's assume that it's it's a massive. Rock, so Rock. what are you thinking? I've got lightning, I've got fire. Let's um, do fire. Okay. Agi, yeah. Both fire. So level I don't know anything 48. about level 48. <laughs> I don't know anything about this uh this uh demon's uh weaknesses. But oh okay, so it is weak against fire. Unfortunately it looked like that only did four damage, which is not good. Um does anyone need healing? Oh I guess actually I can use my pixie to heal herself. Pixie, heal thyself. And okay, excellent. And now it is poison. Slime's turn. Shall we try poison? Yeah, I'm gonna Down say here. poison. Okay, yeah. do that. Fingers crossed. Miss. That's no good. Okay, so then the mandrake gets to go. Uh, lightning and a. A regular attack. I have a feeling. I mean, it's rock. Maybe you thinking lightning resist? is no good? Yeah, let's try physical then. Okay, we'll try a physical attack. At least it didn't. Yeah, resist. it, it so didn't resist. That, it that wasn't takes weak, but one way. Yeah. But we do get to go a second time with uh, with the our main character here because of that that first attack. It was weak against. Maybe actually, I can keep this party you going. Can try lightning though too now if you want. Oh. oh, that's true. That's true. I could have. That's fine. But As you saw, again, you got another action I'm able to keep that. going, right? Mm -hmm. So, because um, I, I got that weakness again. So, what do you think? Attack here? Did we um, try wind? We haven't tried wind yet, I don't think. Let's try that out. We've still got a question mark on wind. So, yeah. come on, Pixie. Oh. Okay, three damage. Normal damage. Yeah. All right. Here it goes. Okay, oh, Pixie. <laughs> 
See you on the other side. We're still in here. We got this. Um, Still got three standing, which is pretty good. So you were saying maybe lightning just to try? Yeah, because... Mm. It's still a question mark. I mean, yeah, yeah, go for well. it. Out of curiosity, I have a feeling it's going to resist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shoot. I guess we should have seen that coming. Um, slime, what do you got? Do the poison attack above. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, let's try that one. Okay. Let's try this one. Still the same um, elemental affinity, I think. I think it but... might have. Oh! We got so weak. It was weak. It didn't look like that did damage, but uh, it, it was weak against that. Status effect. So that's good, yeah. Um, Mandrake uh, will just attack again. This is a war of attrition here. <laughs> fire. Um, fire, definitely, I think, is the way to go. But with, with each one of those, you know, those attacks that uh, exploit a weakness, I get another turn. Unfortunately, I just don't know if I can keep keep that going much longer. Yeah, I think this is a valiant poison, effort, though. Yeah, okay, that missed again. This is. Uh, let's see what happens here. Let's oh, happens. is he just going right for you? Oh, whoa, he targeted me straight. Yeah, up. he was just one like, hit. No, we're too. done. Dang. <laughs> So, yeah. And there's a look, too, at uh, two of the lead characters. I know we had more info about that, Ethan, right? Yeah. So this, um, our main character uh, in this game is a human uh, fused with an unknown being. Um, and we kind of got a look at the both of them there. Um, that's that's it. We ended in a game over, but but that was Shin Megami Tensei Five. And, of course, there's always going to be more. Um, and that was Shin Megami Tensei Five, And that comes out on November 12th with pre-orders starting on June 21st. So definitely look forward to it. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Oh, yeah. See you soon. <laughs> Welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I'm Audrey. I'm here with my good friends Demetrius and Kay, and we're very excited to show you Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Now, this is a complete uh, remake from the ground up of Advance Wars 1 and 2. It's been 20 years since the original game came out on Game Boy Advance, so, you know, I think we've waited long enough. D, why don't you show us how it's done? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so what we're going to do is show you two different missions today, and right now I'm actually playing the, the very first mission in the game, and we're just gonna start right off and kinda just jump right into it. Um, so for those of you who've never played Advance Wars before, um, all the units I control right now are right here on the left-hand side, and the opposing team is gonna be, or enemies, is on the right-hand side. My goal is gonna be to capture this space over here, but let's kinda get started. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start by moving my tank over here. All right. This is looking good. Brave little tank. <laughs> <laughs> I only got one, so <laughs> I gotta make sure to take care of it. When yeah, I see damage like that, I'm like, eep! <laughs> worth noting, this is the same addictive gameplay from the original games, but with redesigned characters and units. So that's why it's so shiny and cartoony. And adorable. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can kind of see the edge of the map look like a board too, which is really, really cool. And this okay. grid-based system might look familiar to fans of Fire Emblem, and this is uh, this is similar except for in this game you actually control squadrons of units instead of individual characters, which obviously has its own challenges, as Dee's going to show us. Yes. It's really cool how they do this. So everything is turn-based. Essentially, um, I'm going to end my turn, and then the enemy will go, and that will consist of the first day. Olaf! Hello, Olaf! <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's clearly It'll... the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Blue Moon is the name of the army that Olaf works for. We are the Orange Star Army. All right, everything's looking good so far. Oh, I was hoping they would lose four. Uh, one more additional tank right here. Okay, that's okay. 
All right, we're doing okay. All right, shaking. So, <laughs> <hell. laughs> all right, I'm already okay. So for those who are wondering, you see right here it says damage 55 percent. So that's the percent I'm gonna do a good amount of damage. Um, one thing to note about this skin that's really interesting is you start off with 10 HP, and that is also the amount of power that you have. Or it's the best way to think about that. So the less number you have, the less power you do. And this is really important because sometimes units can counter attack. Um, keep that in mind because we really want to avoid this medium tank right here. Uh, this thing can hit like a truck and just, well, hit like a tank, actually. Like a tank. <laughs> <laughs> like a and medium tank. You're like a medium it's tank. Heavy. And take everything out. So I want to be very careful about that. And I also want to take out this artillery unit here. So I am going to do that. I've got to be very, very precise here. Okay. So this is looking good. Um, one thing to also note is because I'm in a city right now on a city tile, I had enhanced defense. That's why you see those stars. So fire. This is looking good. Okay, we're going to shoot this. Bombs away. I really don't want this artillery unit to survive because uh, uh, it'll yeah, those, really mess with my, my plan. <laughs> those long range units can be super tricky, so it is a good idea to get rid of them first. Yeah. It's really important in this game to control your surroundings. Be aware of not only where you're placing your units, but uh, what the enemy's ranges are, what's going on with the different bases. There's a lot to, uh, to manage. Correct. You can even capture cities, and this really comes into play later when you build units, which we'll show you in the next mission. Uh, but for now, I'm just capturing just because I want to. It's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing to note is some units have different moves. Uh, they can only move a certain amount of spaces. So, for example, this APC, it's really good to load up some units that have less movement. So that's what I'm planning to do right now. Okay, so everything's looking good. I'm going to end here and go to day two. So what's your overall plan for dealing with this medium tank, D? I am going to kind of create a diversion. My, my goal is to first move all of my APCs, uh, excuse me, all of my, my troops over and then I'm going to use my APC and my tank to block the medium tank from, from moving while I try to capture the base. So, our headquarters, rather. All right. Now, this is a part's a little... I'm going to speed this up just a little bit, but I'm a little worried. Okay, not too much damage. <laughs> well, you can see them actually go through the water because they were placed on the water. Yeah, different tiles have different uh, backgrounds or different effects, and it's really cool. Now, it's the beginning of day three, so that means um, we can talk a little bit beginning uh, here about our CO powers. Wait, but first we have to worship an L. Hi, Nell. <laughs> Hello, Nell. <laughs> <Okay>, move on. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those who are wondering, CO powers are essentially um, unique powers for each additional CO or commanding officer. Um, for Nell, she's going to be able to essentially increase her chance and have a little bit more power, so that's going to be wonderful to do. Yeah, Nell's a lucky lady, so when she increases her luck, good, good things happen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, um, the way CO powers increase is just through battle. It's not just that it randomly builds up, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to activate it right now. All right. You're going to need the luck. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so cute in this animation. Go, Nell. Oh. Okay, this is good. This is working out great. Um, what I need to do here, let's see. They have greater chance of dealing high damage in battle. But everyone's different. Even Olaf has a really good uh, CO power, but I want to make sure to try to avoid that because it's going <laughs> to slow me down. Yeah, Olaf's CO power is really cool. <laughs> he actually allows <laughs> I'm sorry, I, had I see to. you there. <laughs> I so appreciate that. <laughs> it allows him to make it snow, which changes the battlefield because his units aren't affected. Their mobility and range aren't affected by snow, but your units are. So you really, you really want to try and avoid that, D. Good luck with that. I know. <laughs> One other thing you might see me uh, do, oh gosh, do I want to take that out? Actually, you know, I'm going to, ooh, <laughs> I don't know. What you going to do, D? Actually, here we go. Uh, <laughs> one of the new features as well to this is I can actually hold down a button and I can speed up the animations, um, which is a great, great new feature. You can also just turn the battle animations off if you want to go even faster. Good. But if you're like Why me, you want to do that? Yeah, exactly. You want to see those they're animations. They're so cute. Yeah, if you really hate delightful things, just turn them off. But... <laughs> Otherwise, you can just fast forward through if you're short on time. <laughs> so we're going to go through that. All right, so this is looking great. Now we're going to see these mech units. That's these guys who carry missiles. They're really good against tanks, so I want to be very careful. Um, but everything's looking good here. I'm going to probably, you know what, I'm just going to stay here and end my turn. This is looking good. 
What yeah. I really love about this game is each time you approach a map, it, it's basically brand new. There are so many different ways you can go about winning or trying to win. And so, uh, like this time, you said you're capturing bases for fun. You, you really, you don't have to capture all of the bases in some maps. So it's really up to you how how much you want to go for it. Yeah. Well, and even on this map, if you were feeling extra lucky or maybe extra reckless, you could try to take out that medium tank mm -hmm. and win by taking out all the units on the map. And that Why does that feel like a challenge, Kate? <laughs> yeah. If you were feeling great. I didn't or, say that. Uh, you should not win for something. <laughs> I guess you could. Wink, wink. <laughs> nah, we ain't going there. <laughs> yeah. it's too smart for that one. No, no, no. <laughs> not gonna happen. I promise I'm not on Olaf's side. Uh -huh. I'm on Olaf's side. I say, oh! But I do support you. <laughs> the battle on two fronts it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that we're looking really good. So this is where it gets a little tricky. I really want to pay attention to the tower because you can see this is the enemy range of attack. You'll see there's one little spot here that I could move my APC and not get attacked. So that's what I'm going to do. That APC is carrying precious cargo. That's yeah, the really key is. to your victory right there, little Henry. Yeah, yeah, I'd be so gentle with little Henry. <laughs> I just canceled that out of fear. <laughs> oh, no, I want to triple check. Yeah, okay. Really, a mistake of just one tile can ruin your whole game. <laughs> For real? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little worried. All right. <laughs> Don't be worried, though. Yeah, you know, I'll capture it. Maybe right be here. a little worried. He's a little worried. A little, a little <laughs> worried. tank is pretty scary, right? It, now. it really it is. is. It really is. The medium tank will destroy my, my regular tank in one shot because I'm at nine. If I was at 10, it would take it down to one, but oh, since no. it was damaged a little bit. Oh, you know feisty Nell got. She did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to capture here. All right, things are looking good. So this is at nine. I'm going to go ahead and park it right here because I can actually get a repair on any cities uh, that I own or have taken over. And don't forget, you can actually capture cities um, that are taken over by the opposing side as well. I won't do that right now, but just in case, if those are wondering. All right, so here we go, Kay. I'm gonna uh -huh. bring this right here. Are you sure? This one's for you. The timing is right, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you make it all the way over to the HQ? Yeah, I can. Okay. You messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep you on your toes, man. That's right, I appreciate it. <laughs> He's got oh. plans. I do got plans. I got good plans. We've seen those plans crumble <laughs> many times. <laughs> but that is the fun part of this. Everybody does have their own play style, and sometimes you have to kind of adjust on the fly, and that's really, really fun about this game. Yeah, it's not Dee's fault Olaf has beard powers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here it comes. Here we go. The strength of the medium tank. Olaf. Oh, I oh, mean, Olaf. <laughs> That's right. Oh. I'll do it alone. <laughs> okay. Let's go here. I'm going to capture. And I'm going to capture. I really should be attacking, Capturing but I'm a lot just, of cities here, actually. Yeah, I'm being a little gluttonous here, but I'm going to move this there to protect. And then I still don't want that medium tank to move. And this is pretty much... That APC has been the MVP of this map. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> now going to a valiant you know sacrificial I'm just, death. I'm just going to end my turn. I'm not even worried. You know? we, we, we just got this. Mm -hmm. No, this will survive mm -hmm. by one. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, oh no! no I, oh, out. I was wrong! Oh, dear. Oh, and we're done. No. Henry, no, Henry. <laughs> I was not expecting that, but it's all right, because, see, you got to protect your base. you got to protect your headquarters. You got that by the skin of your teeth. See? I got it. Yeah. So that's a victory. Perfect. Nice work. All right, so everything's looking good. All right, now No time for celebration, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's we're gonna take on do... something that's a bit more challenging. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and cut away from that's this for I just feel. a second. <laughs> and now I'm going to load up the next one, so let's just cut away for a sec. Perfect. And you you somehow chance. managed to bring down Olaf. I'm happy for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Olaf will be back. Oh, he'll be back. So what we're going to do now is load up mission six, which is going to be a bit more of a challenge. And just a second here, I gotta get through all these screens. But um, this one will be really interesting because now we're going to bring in building units with a base. 
and um, as well as different air units as well. So we have to be very, very, very careful. Right. And we're up against a different CO this time, who is one of my favorites. <laughs> Big Eagle fan, huh? So I am going to unabashedly be rooting for Eagle. <laughs> I'll root for D, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we're, we're back in. Okay, so Those little animations are so cute. Yeah, they I really do it. emote very well. It's, mm -hmm. it's super, super cool. All right, so right now, essentially in the story, we're we're kind of seeing what's going on. We don't know who we're taking on. We don't know in just for the next few seconds. But as it is, it's Eagle, and Eagle's very, very dangerous um, because he's extremely good with his air units. Now, as you see, the map is quite a bit bigger now, and I still want to capture this headquarters here. And, um, because you're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could Ooh. go the hard way, but <laughs> why, why, why? You know what? You, you just got to play it smart, right? <laughs> is that what you're calling it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll take it. A win is a win, Kay. You know this. <laughs> I think you've got a decent chance of winning, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I will take that, too. All right, so now I do have my own heavy tank, or excuse me, medium tank, and I'm going to use this to kind of create uh, an open space. It's a good moment to see how the different units uh, and uh, different vehicles look different on the different sides. Exactly. Wait till we get to see some of these aerial units in action. Oh, yeah. That's where the fun is at. Mm -hmm. Oh, like this one? You want to see this one in action? Fun for us. I'm uh -huh. about to shoot Actually. it down. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, these are the small fries, though. <laughs> like, we'll see how big you talk when you have to go up against the jets. <laughs> oh. I'm a little worried about the jets. <laughs> you should be. The jets yes. are formidable. And their range is enormous. They really are. And I will show everybody in just one second what we mean by that. So you see you've got a, what is it, the transport copter loaded up yes. with one of your infantry units. Which I'm going to move down here. And this is really the, the key of the, at least my strategy here, is I really want to protect this transport copter. Um, I really want to also protect the battle copter as well if I can. But this right here is key because I'm going to fly it all the way over and land right there. But as you can see over here, these jets Ooh. have an incredible range. And with Eagle CEO power, which makes them able to go twice, it's really, really tough. So you basically it's have brutal. to pay attention to the placement of that copter at all times. You, mm -hmm. you really do. You really do. Good luck. <laughs> so what I really want to do is try to block this transport copter a lot. So I'm actually going to build an APC. And I'm gonna, you're going to see me do that one more time because I want to actually build a couple and use them to kind of lure a lot of things away. So things are looking good here. That's a really good point. How you manage your resources really has a deep impact on your gameplay. It affects how you're able to complete objectives, how hard it is for yourself even. So you really have to keep an eye on your, your gold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see where he moves. I really love the bases too because they do give you Ooh. more range and more, more options on how you want to tackle certain challenges. Mm -hmm. And see, this is really fascinating part about this game was during my practice, one jet went up top and one jet went below, but now they both went below. So there must be something that I'm not seeing, but that's really the fun part. So I'm going to have to improvise a little bit here. Nice. Those rockets were... Yeah, you blocked. can't really plan for the full map. They're always going to take you by surprise in some yep. way or another. Yeah, so what I want to do now is... All right, so I'm going to move... Are you sure about that? <laughs> yes. Y yes? He yes. was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right know. Here. I've seen you getting in trouble at this place before, so... I'm going to wait here, and this is what I'm going to do. That was ancient history. Is it? Here. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> I am going to move Ooh. here. Woo. That was gutsy. Yeah. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> My plan is working. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I do want to keep that there. All right, shoo. Now the jets cannot attack things on the ground. They only go air to air. So as you see now, I'm boxing everything in. The only thing I'm worried about is if a jet goes from behind and takes out my battle copter. So I gotta be very careful. Mm -hmm. But so far, we, we in there. I'm gonna move right here. Move this here. I think people call this the turtle technique. <laughs> <laughs> it's called winning. 
<laughs> and I will take it. That. <laughs> okay, let's do end turn. And there is a bomber up in the top hand uh, right, but I don't want to go within that view. Now you'll see that Eagle's taking over bases as well, but we're okay with that. Um, I have I have plans. I have plans, ladies. <laughs> we believe I think we got you. This. Yeah, that's what Do you it, always though. say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. It okay. really feels like playing with a bunch of uh, toy soldiers when you're playing. Yeah, it really game. does have that feel, doesn't it? Okay. So everything's looking good. What I really want to do now is take this one out. So if I don't destroy these, it really gives Eagle a chance to use all of this arsenal twice. Um, just his air units, and even though he goes on the second time, it's going to be at half power, but it's still very, very formidable. So now I'm going to be a little risky here. I'm going to move this forward. And all right, like, that he's was creating nice. space. That's interesting. <laughs> but here, I'm going to do this. It's not what I would have done, but you know, <laughs> it's okay. You play your game. <laughs> <laughs> and now I want to move over here. So we're going to end up more, more than likely. I won't be able to. Nice. You got him. Yeah, so now I'm going to be careful. So see, we have to see how. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So this looks good. Yeah. I'm just going to move you over because I know you're going to. You know what? Yeah. I know what you're going to do. Gotta take a chance do. sometimes. Well, because what what Eel can do is kind of fly around, right? And then activate and come right back under. Yeah. Yes. So what I'm going to do is block right here. Ooh, that's pretty clever. Actually. You've learned from your mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't move anything else, so I'm just going to be first uh, forced to end my turn. <laughs> and that CO power is full, so we'll see. Have mercy, Eagle. We'll see when he chooses to use it. I'm not sure if he'll use it now, but I know if he does not use it now and I blow his jet out of the sky, th yep, oh. then he will use that bomber and probably destroy my medium tank and maybe an APC, but that's okay. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Again, mm -hmm. part of the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got this. Everything's looking good. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> that's how you're making D feel right now. <laughs> 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 All right, we got this here. I'm going to speed things up again. This will finish it, yes. All right, now I can safely start moving all of my troops over. Now life can resume again. <laughs> yeah, we now we're looking really bit, good. So yeah. now I can just fly all the way over here. Mm. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. we good. Remember whose side she's on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> This is very true. I have to admit, you're doing very well. <laughs> For now. Her to say I it, don't but... believe you. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> you do still have that bomber to worry about. I do. And I still have to make sure I don't draw too much attention. I don't think I'm going to be able to move this right. Yeah, you really don't want them to come for you until you're quite ready for it. Oh, man, I really can't move very far. Okay, here. I don't think you'll be able to relax until Eagle uses that CO power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I still have... Okay. I should be all right. I'm going to try to move right... Here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going for it. Oh. Well, we'll see. We'll see if this is the start of your downfall. So we definitely just lost this medium tank. And I think we might lose my anti-air unit as well, but that's okay. It's always hard to predict Speed what Eagle's going to go for next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. He might actually go for an APC. And you'll see bombers are incredibly powerful. I Ooh. love this animation so much. Yeah, it's like everything out. The game is beginning now. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. Ugh. Here it comes. Yes. <laughs> but see, I, I planned this. I can't help but notice your transport copter is uh, <laughs> not being turtled. But no, it's okay because you can't bomb the transport copter, so we're fine. Mm -hmm. The bomber can't attack. But yep, going for an APC. Oh, your trick worked. Yeah. That's pretty good. And that, yeah, this is the type of play style. I like to 
kind of try to draw them out in you know on my my time. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're looking really really good here now. So I'm gonna start capture everything, capture the space, then I'm gonna capture this city. And the way that works is you see there's a point structure there. And again, remember that units have uh, different. Oh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> uh, have, have HP. So um, to capture this, I need 20. And since I have a full unit at 10, that means I'll be able to capture it next turn. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to shoot this thing down totally, right? Yeah, 116. There we go. That's going to feel pretty good. Bye! Oh, oh. <laughs> gone. What do you think Bye, about that, Carrie? Bye, Bomber. <laughs> you will be remembered. <laughs> all right, so now we really opened up a lot. So I'm going to move all of my stuff up because we still kind of have to worry um, about the bases. We don't want a bunch of tanks starting to roll across the bridge here. And there still is a tank up there, so I'm just going to start moving into position. Actually, ooh. Yeah, just because that bomber's gone doesn't mean he doesn't have tricks up his sleeve still. Correct. Never underestimate your opponent. You never know what they're going to do. You're learning. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go ahead and supply. You want to capture that? Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. Nope. Cam. Sorry. Not Said. Today. Are they really Ooh. serious? Even with that high amount of defense, that's not going to help you. All right. Eagle's now let's move. not happy over about here. that. No. <laughs> Just move that over there. Okay, we're looking good, right? I'm not forgetting anything, am I, ladies? No. Not that Kay's going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and now you may be wondering, well, Demetrius, you have your CO power. I'm going to save that for for the end, and you'll, you'll see why. Sometimes when you get your CO power, you don't really want to use it right away. You want to use it at the most opportune moment. Right. That's right. It's You're not so easy Andy to get it back. This time instead of now, so you've got a different... Correct. Different CO power this time. To show off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is move my tank over here. Looking good. Cam said, to move my Why do not they play Super Smash Bros. or Agent right Game coming out? All right, here we go. So now we know the tank can come all the way down, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly over here, drop. And now there's nothing this tank can do. And I'm going to move my Battlecopter in po into position. And really, this is pretty much winnable no matter what now. And I'm actually in a really good spot here. Yeah. I don't you know think you're I've feeling seen you cozy. do this well before. He's capturing <laughs> so many cities. He's feeling cozy. Yeah. I practiced. <laughs> <laughs> we won't ask you how many times. <laughs> I was, let's say more than one. <laughs> Replay value. <laughs> now this will do some significant damage, but we're okay. All right, here comes wow. all the tanks and all that, but we're not worried about that. Now, if for some reason things did go south, you can just, you know, just as a little bit of advice, you can always start to build something down here like rockets. And now you see I have the bridge covered. So I can just start piling things on, going over here. I can move over here. See, now I have so many things covered. Cam Let's go ahead and use said, this battlecopter I don't this want down. to play this game at all. all right. It's not going to do much damage. And you may be wondering, well, this is still wounded. Well, now it's time to use my CO power. <laughs> Cam. <laughs> Said, so Andy I am has getting ready Hyper right repair. now. And remember now, every unit has about 10, uh, has 10 HP. With Hyper Repair, you get 2 HP back for every unit you have. Oh, nice. It's really, really wonderful. That can really save your neck yeah. sometimes, too. Yeah, I've, I've won many, many missions just repairing and getting through it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're looking good here. We have it captured. Can I move? Oh, it's out of the way. Can't help it. I gotta capture more. <laughs> it's One right thing to there. know too <laughs> is the more cities you have captured, the more amount of gold or, or in-game currency you're gonna get per turn, and that's what helps you build everything. Okay, so you know what? I think we're good. I'm not even gonna worry. I'm just gonna end my turn. Mm -hmm. We got this. You're doing pretty great resource management here, I have to say. Capturing cities, building at bases. You're you're owning. So you're a far. worthy opponent. He's trying. <laughs> Look, that does nothing. That does nothing. You can move all over here. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just going to hold fast forward here. You can't even take out my regular. You got nothing. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Now you're mocking me. <laughs> <laughs> you better, you better uh, yeah, it's not be careful fly. how uh, confident you are. Oh, you it's know, not over till it's over. Should I capture everything I just said? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to skip it all. <laughs> capture. You're going to make him so Boom, mad. Boom, and that's it. That's mission accomplished. Ooh. Very well done. It, no, that seems possible because I was playing. We never oh. doubted you for a second, either of us. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there is a lot more to show um, in the future. Uh, <laughs> don't forget, this was just from the first campaign of Advance Wars 1. Um, there is also the second campaign, Advance Wars 2, Black Hole Rising. And also, uh, I'd like to say real quickly that there is online uh, gameplay. So there is more going to be uh, about that coming so, uh, in the future as well. That's right. We've got a four-player uh, co-op that supports uh, up to four players and uh, all kinds of Commanding officers, weather, fog of war, different units. We haven't even taken a look at Advanced Wars 2, so there's still a lot to discover, but we were so happy to be able to show you this. And uh, please stay tuned. Next, we're going to take a look at WarioWare Get It Together. So stick around. Hello, and welcome to Nintendo Treehouse Live. My name is Riona, the rambunctious, and I'm joined today by Ethan, the enthusiastic, and Brandon, the bodacious. And today, we are going to be showing you WarioWare Get It Together, new WarioWare title that's coming to Nintendo Switch. A lot of fun, very exciting, and Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about WarioWare? I am so excited to talk about WarioWare and share this game with everybody. So, uh, yeah, this is a new WarioWare game, and here's what we're going to do. Part of the fun of any new WarioWare game is the surprise factor. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this game, uh, and we're going to show you a little bit of it. This will be a micro segment to match the micro games of WarioWare Get It Together. Cleverly uh, done, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're going to dive into story mode here and show you just three quick levels uh, in this story mode. Uh, this is just a very small taste. So uh, as you can see, I've played through a little bit of this uh, already. So this is kind of returning to story mode. Uh, you can see my high score off on the right there showing uh, how well I've done in the past. So uh, we're going to hop into Wario's intro games here. Um, and right away, you can see some very different cool stuff happening in this WarioWare game. Uh, character playable, selection. So playable many. characters. <laughs> um, so I have a variety of characters here. This is just who I've met so far, uh, mm -hmm. just early on in the adventure. Um, so I'm going to start with Wario, uh, uh, of course, that makes sense, uh, and play as Cricket and 18 Volt as well. Um, so you're like uh, building a team of three. Yeah, you get to, to pick take. sort of a small crew to take with you into these micro games, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and they all control differently. And well, I don't want to. I don't. I'll let the visuals uh, do the talking. Yeah. And you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> and for uh, anyone who's not familiar with micro games, they're basically these little bite-sized games, uh, really fast, really hectic, really chaotic, and the goal is to finish them as quickly as possible before the time runs out. Yep. Uh, but part of the fun is figuring out what exactly you have to do. So right. hypnotize here yep and each micro game has a way to succeed and you know if you don't do that specific thing you will lose one of your little life bars down below as you can see um, but no! we're already Ooh. seeing though the different characters and this is new to the WarioWare series the different characters behave and act differently um, and have different abilities so young cricket there we just saw um, has the ability to jump high We've got uh, 18 volt here is uh, throwing these discs from his head. Um, and that's going to change the way that you play the same micro games. Right. Um, different characters know. are going to play them differently. Mm. And you never know who you're going to get. So it's always, you know, completely random. Maybe you are really familiar with the game. You're used to playing with a certain character, but now you have a completely different character. Right. So, so you pick the three, but then you don't really have control over which character is going to play which stage. Mm. Brandon is just knocking it out of the park here. Yeah. I mean, if you see everybody <laughs> quiet, I have to focus. <laughs> no talking for the rest of the segment. Oh, okay. You can do it. And I love the different art styles that are on display. Mm. Um, you definitely need to expect the unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
And it's fun, you know, when you win, there's a different animation. When you lose, there's right. a different animation. Right. And both are super wacky and fun to look at. Like, oh, I, I love this one. <laughs> look at this little Mario. Oh. Well, it's super fun to just watch these games because, <laughs> you know, you get to pay attention to all the detail that's happening on the screen. Whereas when you're playing, you're, you're really focused on, on trying to succeed. So, you know... It's so maybe only in repeated playthroughs that you get to see those details. But. Yeah, I appreciate you guys helping uh, uh, explain what's happening because I'm entering a fugue state the longer I play these yeah. micro games. <laughs> now Brandon's <laughs> made it to the boss level of uh, Wario's, Wario's level, and this is a little bit longer than the other micro games, as you can see. Uh, each level will have a different boss level, obviously. Since this is Wario, you can of see course. you've got the garlic volcano in the background. <laughs> sure. Yeah, Cricket uh, controls very differently than, say, 18 volt or, or WarioWare would in this stage. As Wario, I would be floating around uh, and having a little more control and a little easier time. And as 18 volt, I'd even be stationary and only have to worry about hitting my target. But here, I actually have to actively <laughs> move Cricket around <laughs> platformer style, which is very different for a yep. WarioWare game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll find, I mean, some characters are, you know, really well suited to some stages and, and will make that stage a cinch. And then, you know, another character, based on their particular ability, might have, you know, a little bit more of a challenge on that stage. So, again, it adds that extra layer, not knowing what to expect. <laughs> okay, we're going to stop there. Okay. Very nice, a, a brief break in the action. Because in a, a first-time playthrough of story mode, uh, you would actually get to the boss uh, the boss micro game and then back out and, and get to explore other levels. If you return, you get to just keep playing and see how high your score can get. Right. So instead of playing more and revealing more of those micro games, we're going to save that for you guys for later. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're going to hop into a different level here. We're playing oh, Mona's games. Mona. Mona. Actually, Brandon, I don't want you to have all the fun yourself. So do you mind if I hop in here as well? Would not mind at all. In all fact, right. that's one of the other cool features of this WarioWare game uh, is that two player has been added. So there's co-op mode where you and I can both uh, play together. So I'm going to turn on two players here. Awesome. And so right now we're playing on one system with two Joy-Cons, but right. we could also play together local co-op. You know, if I had my Nintendo Switch Lite with me, I could connect to you, we could play together. And dibs on Mona! Yes! <laughs> I think that's fine. Uh, I'm going to play with Wario again. Um, yeah. okay. And one other cool <gasps> thing about two-player mode is there are some characters that are built for two players, like Dribble and Spitz. Right. So we can each control Dribble and Spitz, who have very similar moves, right. uh, but uh, are, are two completely different characters for player one and player two. So yeah. uh, I'm going to pick 18 volt again. Yeah, so we'll Dribble will always shoot to the right, and Spitz will always shoot to the left. Riona, are you ready? I am so ready. I don't know if you guys are ready. We'll see, though. Oh, there's, I'm ready. And this adds, you know, even another layer, kind of. There's going to be two <laughs> players on screen at the same time, uh, each with their own abilities. Um, and you have to, it's hard, you know, <laughs> here because you have to work together and make sure you're not at cross purposes, you know. Talking, communicating is important. Oh. Um, Stay away from those dust bunnies. Oh, okay. So we can see Wario's got his... Well, he's got a jetpack, I guess, and he's uh, he's got his dash he can do. Meanwhile, Krygor can kind of swim through the screen like you saw. Now we've got 18 volt, and Mona can ride her scooter and then and uh, throw a boomerang. So there's again lots of difference uh, differences in the way the characters behave. You guys are aging such quick this. work. Yeah, wow. Nice <laughs> yeah, it's it's there's so much variety in how these games are presented. The normal loop is completely different now that there's playable characters. <laughs> And you'll see the uh, Mona's level, the theme is kind of uh, everyday life. Yep. So she's got, you know, just the, oh, 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 get that away. Yeah. Nicely done, guys. I <laughs> love that guy. Yeah, we've got little dusters down below that represent our lives. Yep. Uh, some craziness going on in the background. Yeah, oh, so okay. much detail to, to notice. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. I use my boomerang. Yeah. Well done. Very nice. <laughs> I, I love the different options there are to play two player, right? So you can. You can be doing this via um, you can be doing this via uh, your you know same system like you guys are doing sharing uh, two Joy Cons or you can be doing local wirelessly you know on two different systems. Artist um, forbidden. <laughs> Watch out! Watch out! Oh god! Oh. Nice. I claim this nice. one. <laughs> Don't get chomped. This hole was made for me. Yeah, you can see Moda's constantly moving there, so uh, puzzles like that can be a little tricky if mm -hmm. you're supposed to get in one specific spot. Yeah. Oh, Tiny, get rid of the spider. <laughs> we did. Wow. Oh. Nicely done. Okay, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna okay, stop there. That's, okay, that's enough. Again, there's a lot of yeah. really cool stuff in here. We do not lot. want to spoil too much. It's hard to, mm -hmm. to stop, though. You get in such a rhythm. I know. Really yeah, like I said, you enter the WarioWare <laughs> fugue state, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which there is no known uh, uh, treatment for, unfortunately. <laughs> Just uh, more WarioWare. Keep playing more WarioWare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's one more thing we want to show you here. 
It is a very cool returning element uh, to WarioWare, and that is 9 Volt's level. Yes. Uh, 9 Volt is the Nintendo fan of WarioWare's crew. Yeah. Um, and uh, in this in this game, like in other WarioWare games, 9 Volt has built some games based on Nintendo classics. Mm -hmm. um, these are very, very cool, uh, very and we do not want to spoil all those, so we're going to show three of these, yep. just to give you a taste, yep. to give you an idea of what these are like. Um, I don't know which three they're going to be, because the game likes to shuffle them. I know so, which ones I want them to be. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Well, we'll see if we get them. So uh, Rion and I will hop in here uh, and tackle three of these. Nintendo Classic Minecraft. Right, so I will play. You pick your your three characters again. I will play as a nine volt since this is his level. Um, nice. Right. And do dribble and spits. Yeah, let's do dribble and spits yeah. again and eighteen volt. And one thing I'm I like about uh, co-op. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one thing I like about co-op is that, you know, even if one of us fails or loses, the other one, as long as the other one wins, then yeah, that's right. It's a success. That's you a can point. see we're skipping the cutscenes as well. We don't want to ruin any of those cool character moments yeah. for you guys. Find ghost. Find oh, ghost. Yeah, ghost. Yes. Got him. <laughs> yeah, you can see his nine volt. I'm always yeah. moving on a skateboard. Deliver. Oh god. Oh, this one's always. Oh. <laughs> you got oh. this. Come on. Yes. Nice. Nicely You're done. Fauna. Okay, what's the last one? What's the last okay, one? What's oh, gonna, is it our gonna last one gonna be? Oh, oh god. Okay. 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 Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, Ice climber. Uh, Come on, get up there. You can do it. Woo. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> That's all we're gonna show of the Nintendo games in 9 volts. Level. Ah, I want to play more. I know, I know. Yeah. There's a lot here. There's a lot to There's do, so but much I don't more. want to spoil a surprise for everybody. <laughs> so, uh, that's it for this this uh, quick look at, at, at or this this micro segment to match the micro games of <laughs> WarioWare. Get it together. Um, cannot wait for everybody to get their hands on this and play it later. It's going to be very, very cool. So A lot of fun. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us today. Wait, and <gasps> one more thing. I can't let us end this segment until all of us have given our best. No. Wah. Yes. We're doing this? For we are doing I, yes, it. I mean this. We're not letting anybody leave. <laughs> I will hold you down in your chair <laughs> until you do this. So, uh, I'm going to kick it off, right? Okay. Please do. Wah. Wah. Wow. <laughs> it's very satisfying. That was Thank great. You. Thank you. Not going to forgive you for that. <laughs> now we can end the segment. Okay. Uh, WarioWare Get It Together is coming out on September 10th and is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, please stay tuned for more Nintendo Treehouse Live. And coming up next is Metroid Dread. Hi, welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. Uh, I'm Dan, back with Audrey and Therese again. We're going to go into a little bit more uh, Metroid Dread, deeper into the planet, into this uh, work in progress game, and see more of Samus's abilities, and uh, maybe see a couple more uh, tough battles. So, uh, Teresa, what have you got for us? Yeah, all right. Um, so, since the previous segment, uh, we've gotten, uh, we were able to defeat the last Emmy. Um, and we're on our way, uh, we got a new ability, and so we're gonna showcase that. Um, we're also gonna go a little bit faster in this segment just to show more of Samus's really free-flowing movement. Mm -hmm. uh, so, speaking of that new ability, uh, we now have Spider Magnet, uh, which is really cool. Now is uh, allowing us to climb these uh, blue magnetic strips here, so. And Samus looks pretty darn cool while she's climbing, I must say. Yeah. Just traverse directly <laughs> from uh, horizontal to vertical there. And this uh, creature over here is uh, blocking my pathway, and it's getting a little bit more jittery as I get closer to it. That's really creepy. Maybe I can <laughs> coerce it out. <laughs> Insecty sounds. <laughs> Oof. Worm door. I also want to note for uh, anyone who hasn't yet seen the first segment, this is the first new 2D Metroid in 19 years. So this is very, very exciting for, for Metroid fans. Yeah, I liked how you countered that worm and shot it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so each here. enemy has like their patterns to learn. So you definitely mm -hmm. want to watch and see how you can counter them or if you need to yeah. tackle them in a different way. Oh no. Uh oh. So this is Corpius. Uh, he is one of the bosses that you'll encounter in Metroid Dread. Uh, we happen to see him uh, very briefly in the first segment. He was, it was the very shimmery uh, creature that was lurking in the background. 
Mm -hmm. No longer lurking. No. Yeah, no. Yeah. He's blurping. <laughs> <laughs> he, He's... Just, he just shot that projectile <laughs> that he shot out of his mouth and got some missiles. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Having good aim is, is in your favor here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's very key to learn the boss's patterns, but also find where to hurt him. And it looks like his face is the weak spot right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tail is pretty deadly, so you want to keep your distance. Mm -hmm. And of course, as always, you want to keep an eye on your missile count. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so since my missile count's running low, I'm going to use Charge Beam, which is also effective. And now he turned invisible. Yeah, Great. Well, what he needed was to be invisible. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. That makes it a Life little bit harder to yeah. find <laughs> its face, but I can try. Otherwise, I could see, yep. So yeah. that little glowy point seems to be a weak spot too. Try to aim for that. A glow shoot it. It's a good maxim for video games in general. Got this. <laughs> and now it's throwing a tantrum, mm -hmm. so it broke some of the environment. I see some blue magnetic magnetic strips there, which I could probably use to my advantage. Oh. And now it reared its ugly head and turned to its backside, which is probably its best side. <laughs> it's also rearing for bad. something. I don't... Ow! Oh, no. Okay. No. Mm. All right. Oh, nice, oh, nice slide. So we're turning here to a cinematic, but I am effectively throwing missiles at uh, Corpius's face here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another one of those really dynamic camera angles there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jumping right right into a boss fight is a Why really are you good back? way to uh, show. Okay, yep, so those magnetic strips were very handy there. Yep, you have to use <laughs> all of your abilities uh, if you're going to be... Ow. Oops. No. And that poison Ooh. gas doesn't look too healthy. <laughs> Oh, you're mean. This one's always trying to back you into a corner, too. It's not very nice. But if, you, if you stay up there, uh, his tail will go for you as well, so there's no really <laughs> safe spot. Oh. Maybe I can lure it? Yes. Oh, that works. Get stuck, buddy. Nope. Missiles, yay. Okay, where are you again? Oh. oh. Tricked me. Yep. What are you doing? Oh, no. Oh. I know your game. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Not today. Oh. I don't think he's going to like this. Ah. Eat missiles. <laughs> One last charge beam for effect. Mm-hmm. I think you got him. This is it. <sighs> Look at Samus. <laughs> that Samus beautiful pose. Cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nothing scares Samus. So good. <laughs> oh, look at that stick right <laughs> through the tail. 10-10. <laughs> <laughs> you get a really good look at her suit here. Yeah, I'd be watching for a moment, too. Like, I'm going to stay down. <laughs> yeah. Hold that pose. Yeah. Ooh, what did we get? Ah, uh, yeah. Phantom Cloak. Of course. That's how Corpius was turning invisible. <laughs> so the Phantom Cloak was uh, previewed and mentioned by Sakamoto-san in his uh, video earlier this morning. Um, it is an Aeon ability. And for some of you at home who have played Metroid Samus Returns may recognize Aeon abilities, but these are brand new and they play very differently in Metroid Dread. 
Yeah, we find new Aeon abilities, and this one actually, uh, it's more of an endurance gauge, so it fills up over time. But you really, really want to keep a close eye on it, because the last thing you want is for your Phantom Cloak to disappear when you really need it. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's actually showcase it here. So before, I wasn't able to go through these doors. Um, they're called Presence Doors, but now, with the Phantom Cloak, I'm able to move, progress through them. Mm -hmm. um, I am moving a lot slower with the Phantom Cloak, and as you can see, the energy gauge right underneath is slowly decreasing, but as I move, it decreases even faster, and once it's depleted, it starts taking away from my health. So I have to deactivate it. Um, I can replenish it really quickly by moving, and then only then can I reactivate it again. Take this elevator up. Thank you. Yeah, just like the other abilities, this opens up new areas that you can go and explore, being able to go through those presence doors. So, a uh, whole lot more adventure to, to unravel here. Love this view. Th that background is so beautiful. Yeah, this is a new section of this world, filled with Ooh. magma. Just in case. Oh. <laughs> Those flying guys can be such a nuisance when you're trying to get across Oh, there. they can be. You handled them very readily. Yeah, you made Thank that look you. easy. <laughs> <laughs> now flamethrowers. Mm -hmm. Get away from me. <laughs> nice. Uh, this is really cool. So um, we're still in the area of Arteria, which is the very beginning part of the game. And this is a feature, which is an elevator that allows you to uh, travel to different parts of planet ZDR. Um, so now we're moving to Cataris. And as you can see in the map, um, this game plays very differently where you start from the center core of the planet and you're working your way up all the way to Samus's ship. So um, it is a very different feeling really builds up on the uh do i say dread <laughs> isolation <laughs> it really does it showed you had kind of a long way to go to the surface there too mm -hmm. that little dot at the top was your ship here's a moment for us to not be <laughs> you know attacked and also enjoy this beautiful hd graphics <laughs> a little reprieve <laughs> All right, so this is Cataris. Let's explore. Mm -hmm. Ow. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Welcoming committee. You can't it's rest on your laurels for a minute in this game. Oh yeah, not at all. These enemies are different too. Uh, as you can see, their counter is very uh, different. Um, um, but they are really cool, very satisfying to counter. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that place is very hot. We don't have an upgrade for that yet, so we'll have to come back later and explore it when we do have an available an a, a ability to explore it. So, ah, that looks like an area. Oh, and yes, <laughs> when in doubt, rush here. <laughs> Start blasting. Sneaky. No. Oh. <laughs> You never underestimate the little enemies. They mm -hmm. can really mess you up. They can, especially those. They're mm -hmm. very, ooh, very agile. Mm -hmm. You can see as you learn the enemies' patterns, you can see tells for when they're about to attack a lot of times, and that'll help you know when to counter. I really love the dash melee ability. Mm -hmm. It allows me to effectively get uh, rid of some enemies really quickly. So this is another room, a communication room uh, where we'll be able to communicate with Adam. And I kind of want to make it clear too that uh, Adam is uh, Samus's uh, ship's computer. Uh, we're going to skip through this area really quickly and have Dan kind of summarize what uh, Adam says. But Adam is just a point for lore. Uh, does not do a give any direction to Samus. It is up to the player to choose where they want to nav navigate and where to explore. But yeah, yeah we're only cutting away because we don't want to give away any juicy lore tidbits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And basically he was just talking about how this area is sort of the thermal power for um, the, the planet. And um, by redirecting that power, you can potentially open up other areas. And he also had a few little tidbits about the Phantom Cloak, which we, we already knew about how that gauge worked, thanks to Teresa's explanation. Oh, look in the background, you can see magma flowing through some of those pipes, but not the others. Yeah, all of these pipes are very interesting, and this mysterious door opened up, too. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Here's an interactable, which allows, uh, so this area of Cataros uh, controls the magma uh, flow of the planet. And so we're able through these interactables, uh, change the flow to access other areas. So now because we changed the thermal flow, we're not able to backtrack to where we were. So find a different path. It's such a niche touch that something we were just talking about in the background actually has a uh, gameplay component. Mm -hmm. No. And there we can see that magma flowing through those pipes. Yep. Oh, and that opened that doorway there. As uh, Teresa is very well aware, there's such a, a diverse uh, amount of life in <laughs> in this world. So many different kinds of alien creatures that maybe not when they're mercilessly attacking you, but it's really neat to otherwise to yeah. see such uh, different uh, alien creatures. Nope. No, thank you. Look at that background. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Ooh, oh, watch out for him. These, these enemies are pretty gnarly. Uh, they throw little uh, balls of hurt <laughs> that I don't particularly enjoy. <gasps> Maybe not stay in the spawning point of the yeah. enemy. Oh, That'd be good. a pixelated door. I don't know what that means. Oh, I'm so nervous. Okay, here we go. Yep. So this door leads to another Emmy zone. Mm-hmm. So I believe we're gonna... That sense of dread you're Emmy. feeling is very warranted. <laughs> well, I feel it. Sure. I, I feel it. Palms they have their little beeping. Ah, those beeping. It's blue, though, look. Yeah, so Samus has been able to use the Phantom Cloak to her advantage by escaping uh, this Emmy. And this Emmy can crawl through tight spaces, so it's pretty formidable. Um, yeah, really liking that Phantom Cloak about mm -hmm. now. <laughs> okay, I need, I need to not be hearing those beeps. They yeah. scare me. <laughs> <laughs> the beeps. Oh. Oh, Ooh. It's oh, it's watch here. out. Oh, see, it, it heard that noise, and so it's now oh. in yellow mode. Ooh. Please don't notice me. Well, well used phantom cloak mm -hmm. there. <laughs> that saved your tail. So you can see okay. in the mini map, the little red dot is the Emmy. It is still nearby. I. Making sure that it doesn't hear me. Okay. We're good. Oh, oh auto tool. Why oh, would you no. do this to me? Because <laughs> it wanted to give you some items. <laughs> no. Okay. Maybe I didn't call the Emmy to my. No? Oh, oh why? This oh. One's Blend in with the background. Yeah, I, I need these guys to just go away. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some good missiles, though. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right, I have the spider magnet ability. I should just use it. All right, let's see. There's nothing here. Sounds oh, like there's something here. <laughs> there's something there. No, 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 Run. please. 
really want to stay at a distance from. Oh, I didn't notice you. You're so sneaky. Mm -hmm. Emmys, because if they get up close and personal, it's not going to be in your favor most of the time. Go away. Please. Go. Please go away. Oof. <laughs> Meanwhile, your gauge is just getting lower mm -hmm. and lower. No, don't, don't, don't uh, say that. No, it's I mean, fine. I mean, it's fine. It's, it's all fine. fine. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> okay. Yep, yep, you, you keep going that way, buddy. Nothing to see here. No, it's still there. I think it went the direction oh, that I want to go. Ah! No! No! It hurt no! Run! <laughs> Can I trick it? Every bounty hunter for themselves. Yep. <laughs> I'm brave. Oh! I will escape you. <laughs> so when it turns in, turns red with the pursuit mode, it will still be able to oh, find you. Oh, charge her! No. <gasps> Even if you phantom cloak. Oh no! Oh no! No! Oh. Oh. The Emmys so are brutal. Okay. Brutal to dodge. They're that nearly impossible <laughs> to uh, counter. Oof! All right, let's try this again. Back, Back in. into the Wolfston we go. <laughs> Skip that cutscene. It's glorious, but mm -hmm. we've already seen it. We've got business. Oh, you're there already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Waiting. I don't like you. You're mean. I think that's fair. Maybe I, I, I can outrun it. <laughs> oh. Open faster, yeah. please. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. All right. So <laughs> that here's the sound's another. gone. Thank goodness. <laughs> so redirecting the thermal fuel. Let's follow it and see where it goes. Yeah, you can actually follow that pipe in the background and see what you've done. <laughs> oh, oh no! Why? No no. Buddy. Wow. No. No. No! Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here comes the dread. Yes. So vicious. Okay, so. Sneaky there. Stopped here, which is good. I'm just gonna be more cautious to make sure he's not anywhere near me. Okay. When you finally get out of the Emmy room, you feel so safe, but then... It's deceiving. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's deceiving. deceiving, yes. And you're going to have to go back in there several times. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I don't want to. That's not a linear <laughs> progression. <laughs> they need to stop that. Nice. Yeah, nice. Get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are only trouble if you leave them <laughs> there. You learn that pretty quick. <laughs> See any more? No. Nope, oh, you. There's that guy. Oh, nice. Yeah. I love the music. It just amplifies mm -hmm. so atmosphere. the intensity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's worth noting for anybody who's new to the Metroid series that uh, this is Samus, of course, and she's the protagonist in all of the games. So this might be terribly frightening to us, but this is just a matter of due course for Samus. <laughs> she has been through a lot, and it's just a testament to how amazing she is that she's survived all of it. Yeah, and even if you may be new to the franchise, it's totally okay because the game does a really great job at giving you um, a summary of what has transpired before. Um, so it's really 
Um, it's pretty good, easy to pick up, especially if this is your first game mm -hmm. um, in the series. Um, and also, if you don't know who Samus is, but you know maybe Samus the fighter in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, same character. Yeah, find mm -hmm. out how she earned her stripes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I just love watching Samus slide. <laughs> it's such a great animation. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. And another way to use your phantom cloak to get through that door. I don't know if anyone else is forgetting to breathe. <laughs> Remember to breathe. I, I did. <laughs> All right. Well, this statue looks really mysterious, but uh, this is the cliffhanger. We're going to stop here because, uh, again, we don't really want to spoil too much of the story, but we wanted to give you at home a sneak peek of uh, Metroid Dread. We're really excited to play it. Um, we're really excited for your, you guys at home to also get your hands on when it comes out on um, October 10th um, or 8th. October 8th. Yeah. So, um, but before we go, I have a little surprise to show you. Um, it is the special edition version of this game, and there it is in its glory. Yeah, in all of its glory, you get a steel book with the game included, of course, and five uh, uh, art cards and an art book, which is really exciting. They chronicle Samus's adventures in the 2D games. So, like we said, whether you are a longtime fan of Samus and her adventures in Metroid or you're new to the series, this is a great way to either celebrate your fandom or kind of get up to speed before you play the game. So yep. it's really neat. And yeah. here it is. Yeah, all that and the game. So mm -hmm. <laughs> really, really cool. Yeah, this game um, really has great. something for everyone. Action, exploration, puzzles, Samus being cool. It's got it all. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I uh, just wanted to thank again for the fans for tuning in. And uh, thanks for sticking with us this entire time. Um, yeah, if you, uh, if you missed any of the uh, previous segments, they're all up on YouTube, along with uh, one more segment of a game that we haven't shown um, previously on the stream, so be sure to check that out. Yeah, um, on behalf of everyone at Nintendo, thanks for watching and um, keep smiling.
a nod, but maybe it does have bigger ramifications on the story. Um, obviously, we're, we're just going to have to wait and see what that means. It did feel weird that we got Skyward Sword announced uh, for Switch when there are a lot more obvious Zelda games, but maybe things are starting to connect now with all of this. Mm. Uh, Casey, one thing that I find really peculiar about this this trailer uh, is that we never really see Link's face. Um, mm -hmm. And now there are tons of theories about what that means. Could we be looking at like a multiple Link scenario? Uh, we've seen <laughs> many Links in the past before with Four Swords Adventures. That's always a, a more sort of campy approach. Uh, and obviously we saw Zelda in the original teaser for this game. What's going on with the playable character in this game? Yeah, I noticed that too, that you never see Link's face in any of the gameplay in this, which really weirded me out, but it looks like they're very distinctively two different characters. There's one Link, we assume, in the sky and another Link on the ground. Uh, not only is their hairstyle different, but it looks like the one with the long hair that is up in the sky primarily is the one with the weird arm. However, we do see the one on the ground have some attachments on the left arm, but the left arm doesn't seem deformed in any way, but he does use a flamethrower attachment, which is pretty cool. But there are a lot of theories going around that the Link on the ground is actually just like, might just be a placeholder. And maybe they're just gonna like, I'm just kidding, it's, it's been Zelda the whole time. I don't know if that's actually gonna happen or not. But it looks like they're very distinctively two links, and as Zach was saying, are these two links across two different time periods? And I think one of the things that hints to that is that the link in the sky, they, their shoes look pretty primitive compared to the boots and equipment that the link that we know right. from Breath of the Wild. I have so many questions. There was so much Treehouse, and I rewatched this trailer like 12 times because I was so interested mm -hmm. <laughs> in everything that Joe, goes on. Joe, what was what was something that really stuck out for you in this trailer? Did you were you, you you were flipping out watching this like the rest of us, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like this is this is all I could have hoped for. Like you say, it's a minute and a half just full of things to speculate on. And th so, what arm is the thing that got me? But specifically, the fact that it seems to presage the idea that this isn't just a sequel to Breath of the Wild that's going to use the same mechanics in a new place, in a new setting with a new story. Like, we see new abilities in there. We see new weapons. You know, you're obviously expecting a certain amount of that stuff, but I think it's easy to forget now that it's, what, four years later and a lot of people think it's the best right. game ever made, that Breath of the Wild did loads of stuff that we weren't expecting, and it, it encouraged you to with its world and be creative. And... There are moments in this, you know, we see the the new version of the stasis power. We see that we've got uh, new ways to mess with stuff. That's what's really exciting to me in this. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering, and let's just check the pulse on this one. Do, do you all think that breakable weapons will return? I feel like that was such a core part of the last game. It seemed like people came around to it, you know? Like, it, it, it was an issue early on in the game when your weapons are breaking constantly. Back into the game doesn't seem like too much of a problem. Most people kind of liked it. So what do you think about this one? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm of two minds. I think that the weapon durability thing was like a major sticking point for a lot of people. Like a lot of people's issues with Breath of the Wild uh, come directly from the idea that like, oh, the weapon durability is bad. I personally really liked it because I thought it really, it really enforced the idea that you have to switch up weapons. You have to try different fighting styles. You have to try all these different things. And that's why they're showering you with these weapons constantly, right? So um, I would like to see it make a return. Maybe that durability could be increased so that stuff isn't breaking as often for folks mm -hmm. that didn't dig it in the first place but yeah i mean i i i think that's a core tenet to what breath of the wild is as a new you know entry in the the zelda series so i'd like to see it stick around yeah i i actually wonder if some of the arm mechanic stuff could maybe potentially be a standby weapon that you do have in case of emergency mm. when all your <laughs> weapons break that's a good way of sort of meeting fans in the middle of going hey we kept the weapon breakability stuff but also you know if everything goes south you have this unshatterable firearm Mega Man style and you can do cool stuff with it. I like um, that. Yeah. How do you feel about like the, the, the weapon combat and stuff like that in, in this game, Joe, do you think they're going to expand on this a lot? Maybe just dump in tons and tons more weapons or where do you think this will go? I guess I, to me, it looks more and you know, who knows what they're leaving out of a trailer, but to me, it looks more like they're emphasizing the idea that you can do different things as link innately, as you say, like that kind of backup, set of stuff you know you have your your you have your bomb power and and that kind of stuff i could see that kind of thing being expanded to me like i'm also a big fan of the weapon durability and 
I think what they'd lose by getting rid of it if they did, and you know, we're way into speculation now, is the idea that, you know, Breath of the Wild gave you so much, it really rewarded you at every turn. Like you would go around a corner and find new Cam stuff. And it felt like you were said, constantly being interesting given things for looking around you. Right. And I think you would lose that if you were, you know, kind of pairing back how many times you were finding things. So I think like you say, I think there's a there's a great midpoint there by going look, here's an expanded arsenal of powers that you always have, and also all the other stuff that you can find around the world. I wouldn't expect that to go, go too wild beyond that. Casey, very quickly, um, we still haven't Cam seen dungeons. Said and that's the Mega Man art will be pretty cool for. to use we in this world. the castle lift up in the air, which seems to me like the kind of awesome cutscene you would see before going into a dungeon in a Zelda game. But uh, most of this still uh, is kind of still above ground. Do you think we'll get dungeons in this game? Is or, there anything here leading you to think that we will? I think even more so than the fall down into the depths, and I don't, I think might be reading into this a little bit, but that might suggest that we have to go down into a dungeon to rescue, I hope not rescue her, I'm kind of done rescuing people but <laughs> maybe we'll go down there or maybe zelda will be doing the dungeoneering while the two links from different timelines are doing things above and in the sky and look at that. Up... we we we've, we've veered directly into like fan we've made our own fan game at this uh -huh. point this is great there you go. um can I, well, can, we... I, can i put an idea out there yeah Wait, real what quick about... let's hear it oh yeah what about if those islands up top which are you know limited spaces what if those are your dungeons you know you you have the, the ground, you know, Hyrule field to explore, but when you go up, that's your space that's, to, yeah. to maneuver I'm around. I'm into that. Yeah. That's a sort of like reverse dungeon, upside down thing. That's great. I'm very into it. Uh, that would be new for Zelda. Uh, well, we have tons more Nintendo to talk about in just a minute, but first we will take a very, very short break. So take a deep breath. We will gather our thoughts because there's tons more Nintendo announcements to talk about. Today was awesome. IGN will return right after this, so don't go anywhere. Yeah! It's a link quote. IGN Summer of Gaming is powered by Duracell Optimum. All summer long, we're bringing you the game announcements, developer interviews, and all the demos you care about. So get comfortable and get ready to play. Upgrade your Xbox controller with Duracell Optimum batteries today. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks,
important uh, uh,
everybody talk right now Tell me what you want right now You can get it Yeah, well you can get it Yeah, yeah, you can get it Play it day one with Xbox Game Pass.
You gotta hit me with the Shagma, yeah. the Ligma, okay? The Shagma, the Ligma, and then what's the other one? Candice. That's a classic, that's a classic Candice. That's a good one. Um, I every day. Oh, wait, that was probably bad. Okay, never mind. Ninja, I have so many questions for you. Um, because, well, first, I'm on E3, and as you can tell, I keep having to bleep myself out. I need to learn how to be brand safe. I've seen some of your stuff. Okay. Uh, there's a couple things that a parent might hear that's like, Joseph! Okay, 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 hold on. What how are this? you watching? Okay, wait, how about this? How about this? Um, your parents are virgins. I like it. Because I think that they would laugh at it, and the parents obviously are intelligent enough to know that they're not because their spawn is sitting in front of them. Right. You're, that's actually okay. That's good, okay. right? Yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah. a level comedy. Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, uh, what, what, uh, what, what do kids like these days? Uh, Minecraft, dream, dream. They love dream. Oh my God, they have, they're obsessed with dream. Yeah. yeah all those guys, Tubbo, Tubbo, dream, uh, Tommy freaking Tommy and it. I mean, yeah. they, 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 they could fart into a microphone and go viral. I can fart. There you go. Farting. Oh, so that is funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That was a wet one. Oh my god. Oh my I god. think I just. <laughs> Yikes. 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 Let's yeah. not talk about that. Let's not. Let's not talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, haven't right. even. I haven't even begun to peek. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. yeah, it's coming. Oh my god, I can't wait. You nailed this for brand safety. So. You think so? You're ready. I'm so ready. Got it. I'm really excited. This is awesome. Miko, Miko, you're awesome. Uh, oh. If you actually do want a game, just I hear. I don't know. I'll follow you on Twitter if I don't already, ah. and then just DM me or anything, and we can set something up. Okay. Yeah, yay! That'd be so cool. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <sighs> streaming time. Streaming time. Okay. <sighs> Okay, so you signed up willingly to work with Code Nico. To be fair, when I signed with G4, I did not know that she would be employed. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, uh, that is my coworker. You thought Avali was the weirdest one. No, <laughs> no, no, it's her. It's her. G4 is going to be great, folks. <laughs> I just see. can't wait to see your interaction with. Code I honestly, I, I don't know if I'm ready for that personally. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that. So yeah. let me know when that goes down. I'll, I'll tell you what I can't wait to do. Tell us, Greg. Get to what? my PC and go to Steam. If you go to Steam right now, you'll find on the very front page an E3 link. There it is. You click on it. And guess what? You what? get to see each and every game we've talked about oh. showcase had anything to do with during our four days here. Of course, you can wish list, you can pre order, you can have a good time. Wait for it. Wait for it. It, wait for it. There it is. Go get to the rescue right there. <laughs> click on that. That's the one. They need you. Fall on aces. Click on that one. Go for Cat Cafe, Cat Cafe Manager. Cafe, yeah. Everything for Freedom Games. Yeah, 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 pretty yeah. Much. Everything yeah. for Freedom. We keep putting them over and for no reason because they're great. So yeah, get all those games. Wish list them all. And hey, while you're spending money, have you ordered your E3 merch yet? That's if not, right. check out E3Expo.com slash shop and get your order in today. Bomber right. jackets on point. Very nice, very nice. Long enough for us. I know, to right? Use sleep I like. know, it's very, very nice. Like it. uh, now the big question is, what would you guys like to see here from Bandai Namco Presents House of Ashes? I am not familiar with this, sure. but I have been told that it is scary. And I don't do well with scary. Yeah. You, know, you asked about Code Miko. It's scary. I don't know <laughs> if I can handle that. Well, that's so, a different kind of scary. Yeah, that true. is a much different uh, So I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, a different kind of tone of presentation. Would you like me to hold your hand during this presentation? Sure, so Puppy. I'm okay with that. You know, it's great. Yeah, if you're not familiar, everybody, of course, this is going to be uh, name, uh, Bandai Namco. I still want to say ba Namco Bandai. It's the, when they changed the name, it was, it was years ago, and it still <laughs> yeah. screws me up to this day. Uh, of course, they're working with super massive games on the Dark Picture Anthology, a whole bunch of different horror games that are coming out in quick succession. This is the third one in the anthology already, but if you didn't know them before, of course, Supermassive made Until Dawn, a breakout PlayStation hit that then led to this deal. Of course, they've done Madame Badan already, uh, now they did Little Hope, and now it's yeah. time to see more of House of Ashes. And so, yeah, this one's an exciting different thing, right, Jackie? Well, 
I have been closely monitoring every trailer, any gameplay that has dropped on this, and it is so scary. Like, yeah. I, I really cannot emphasize that enough. Um, but for me, it has to be more than scary, and it has sure. to be more than these terrifying aliens. For some reason, the story really hits with me, and you can also tell that they've invested so much time into this project. And yeah. I'm really hoping we get more of an inside look here, because I am on board, and it is bloody and gory and oh. alien. And, yeah, I'm here for Ooh. it. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, not your cup of tea, but 100% uh, mine. You know, hey, I'm here for Drink it. Though. I'm going to watch baby. it. I'm going to watch it all. So, Oppo yeah. Opposing forces get dropped into a Sumerian temple, right? And all sorts of supernatural elements start yes. popping up. We'll see what's going on here. Yeah. So, Golden Boy, we need you to get it psyched up. We need you to yeah. get ready oh, for Oh, no. Scares. I'm excited to watch it. I'm going to be very okay. scared. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go over to the media area and I'm going to, you know, yeah, I'm going to be horrified because it's going to be great. It's time, though, for our next presenter. And here with their 2021 E3 presentation is Bandai Namco presents House of Ashes. An ancient horror has awoken from its slumber and is hungry for blood. Shall we see how many have fallen into shadow? Satellite sweeps of the war zone have uncovered what appears to be an underground storage facility. But I strongly suspect where chemical weapons are hidden, so we need to move fast. Ready to go, guard. To descend into the unknown alone is extremely brave. Right now, hold fire. Or extremely foolish. We're gonna sigh out this shit. Brothers in arms, or will it be a case of each man for himself? Get down, get down! They're up on the race! Return fire! You teeter on the edge of an abyss. Oh, shit. Your survival depends on the choices you make. They will be as a compass, guiding you through the unknown. We're on God's green earth if we land. What nightmare have these luckless souls fallen into? You keep lookout. Lookout? Lookout for what? One by one, their lights will be snuffed out. Unless you can find the means to save them. Trapped beneath the earth. Swallowed. We have to move. Let's go. By the boy. Will you find the path to salvation? Or be lost in the darkness? Forever. We're here at Supermassive to talk about the next game in the Dark Pictures anthology, House of Ashes. And I'm joined by exec producer Dan. How you doing? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Right, really cool. so let's start at the very start. We're going to be talking about House of Ashes for most of the interview, but for those that don't know, tell us about the Dark Pictures anthology. The Dark Pictures is a series of narrative, story-driven, branching horror stories. Each one is standalone. They each tell a different story, completely separate from the others, but within the same universe. So there is connection between them all. House of Ashes is set at the end of the Iraq war in 2003, with links um, 4,000 years ago that set the story up. So tell us more about the theme and themes, I suppose, within um, House of Ashes. It starts off with a, a military unit. They've got some new technology that can look for weapons of mass destruction underground. They think they've identified something in the Zagros Mountains in Iraq. And then as part of that, they come into conflict with an Iraqi unit. There's a pitched firefight. And then the two groups are plunged underground. There's an earthquake of some sort. And it's revealed that there's a hidden temple underground, you know, these big, massive structures. But these different groups, they're all separated. Um, radio contact is lost. And they're submerged in this black uh, darkness. 
Where on God's green earth have we landed? And then they're going to start hearing things and seeing things and people are going to start disappearing. What the f*** just happened? So this time, it's a very real threat. All of the Dark Pictures games, they all pull something from, from real life or from history, from fact. What's the case with uh, the myth or historical part of, uh, of House of Ashes? So we love looking at, um, looking at and reading myths and legends and stories and doing our research. And we know our fans love it as well because there's something that they can link into afterwards. And, and I love doing that when I'm playing games or watching movies myself. So this one's set 4,000 years ago, the Akkadian Empire and this terrible evil that happened. We had this self-proclaimed God King, Naram Sin, and he essentially cursed his people. He sacked this temple and brought famine and, and devastation to his own people. And so a lot of the history is lost, but we've, we've done a lot of research about it. And then we had a lot of happy accidents that linked into the story we wanted to tell. And the fun thing for us is we get to, we get to do our own take on it. Mm. We get to twist it, and, and obviously we've made our own truth from it. At the end of the sneak peek, the trailer, we saw monsters. Tell us a bit more about what's going on there. The military unit that you're playing as, they don't really know what they're coming up against. They're not human, they're bigger, they're larger, they're faster. The team aren't going to know if there's one or two of them or hundreds or thousands of them. And that's kind of the threat with this, you know, they've got guns, maybe they could try and take one of them down. But maybe there's another one around the corner, or maybe there's a group of them, and maybe they're going to get ambushed. Maybe they're like a cluster. Exactly, and yeah. They all pop a out nest, once. as it were. Yeah. And it's been really fun to work on and, and see these things move around and how horrific they can be. They're different to us, they perceive the world in a different way. Getting little snippets of it in the darkness, and was that, did I see that? Mm. Was it something that moved? Uh, or is it actually just one of the other soldiers that's yeah. stuck in the catacombs? Who's there? We like to try and misdirect people on things, you know, that did you see something, did you not? And that's a great thing within horror, that you think you're going to be scared right now. And we're not going to scare you now. We'll scare you in a minute when it's you're coming. not expecting it. It's always coming. Yeah, always. Okay. So should we expect a huge amount of, of peril in the game? Definitely. Um, we love to do it. Um, you know, it's fun, fun for us to work on, as horrific as it is. And it's, we know that our fans love it as well. So, yeah, there's at least 60 unique deaths, and there's a whole ton of variation on that as well. So Merwin and some of the others, you're going to see different things happening to them depending on how you play it out, you know, getting ripped and shredded and torn and because there's a firefight there's going to be bullets flying as well and all kinds of stuff. And it's not just the deaths, it's the gore that goes along with it and, you know, lots of blood. Wicked. It sounds absolutely terrifying. I'm, I'm in. No, it's not going to lie, man. It's pretty f***ing bad. What differences have you made or changes have you made to the, to the gameplay and mechanics for House of Ashes? We're always evolving the dark pictures. Um, we listen to a lot of the uh, feedback from our fans mm -hmm. um, and, and also our team, what they want to do, how they want to push things forward. So we, we tried some stuff in, in Little Hope with um, you know, more camera control, 360 cameras at certain parts, and we've really leaned on that again, and it really works well. In House of Ashes, lots of the game is set underground, and so these sort of corridors, which are really tight and oppressive. Creepy. Yeah, indeed. So, <laughs> so we've had to learn because you, you take away the fixed cameras, and that takes away some opportunities mm. for horror. But we've had to learn new tricks to scare people and you know ramp up the tension and, and uh, you know the, the chance for jump scares, which you know some people love. We've also got a new torch mechanic, so um, you know it's military themed. So these guys are going to be walking around with weapons with uh, torches mounted on them. We love the lighting that we do, the sort of really inky black darkness that we have uh, and sort of the contrast to the bright areas. And so you're going to need to lean on that torch to allow you to see where you're going, what the threat is and that kind of stuff. We've also done things like um, added difficulty settings to this game. So in Little Hope we added, uh, you know, QTE warning icons as an example and we've got some really good positive feedback about that but also some people want to turn that off. We want to allow you to play the game in your way. So with our accessibility settings and difficulty settings, if you want to have a more casual experience, you can change those settings. Still, most of your characters are going to end up dead. But, you know, that's, that's Spoilers, what Spoilers, yeah, indeed. but that's what we come here for. That's yeah. OK, we can deal with it. So I've got to ask, what was it like working with Ashley? So Ashley was fantastic. She researched Rachel. She understood her when she came mm -hmm. on the set, which is so refreshing. She knew her inside out. And Rachel is a flawed character, so she brought that through so fantastically. The rest of the cast were fantastic as well. When we were looking for Joey, Salim helped me. You didn't tell me this because... You'd flip your shit. 
we want you to connect to these characters and understand them as humans. We want them to seem real because they're real to us. You know, we spend a long time designing them, and and I don't mind if you hate any one individual character because you don't like everyone in real life. But maybe you'll like them when you see the journey they go on. Maybe you'll like them once they're dead and you yeah, feel bad about it. Yeah, and you feel bad yeah. about it, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But also we want you to save them. We want you to try and save them. You know, we know that some people want to get everyone killed straight away, and that's fine. That's their that's playthrough, cool. that's yeah. what they want to do. But, you know, can you get everyone out alive and save as many as you can? It's a lot of replayability there. Indeed, yeah. on forever. I like yeah. that. So, last question. Favourite scene? Favourite scene. So, um... Salim, our Iraqi soldier, and Jason Kolchak, one of the Marines that's there. There's a way that that can play out and a sort of contest between them. And you can make it go in a number of different ways. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's really emotional seeing them film it. I was lucky enough to be there and then seeing that come through in game. I think we've got something there. I think that's gold. Um, and then, of course, I love scaring people. So I love the jump scares. I love the, the moments of tension uh, that we bring. We can't hold you in that moment, so we've got some fantastic jokes in there as well to allow you to relax for a moment before we scare you again. <laughs> to take your mind off yeah. the imminent threat. I like that. Dan, thank you so much. This has been really cool to talk about, and I'm sure, you know, I, I, I'm excited and terrified in equal part, and everyone else is just excited, I'm sure of it. And it's been a real pleasure to speak to you, and I can't wait to get it into people's hands. It's going to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Before we dive in the House of Ashes, see how scared you got. Of course, we want to thank Razor for being one of the E3 2021 sponsors. Of course, giving us these tired old blades nobody cares about. But this Blade Ooh, 14 girl. RTX 3080 built mm. right in. Of course, the Razor. I'm chair. taking that. Thank you so much. No, I'm taking that. We'll okay, see. we'll fight. Okay, well, well, we've done it before. You know what? I'll take the hand-me-down. I'll be, I'll, I'll be little brother. <laughs> I'll take the outdated. Nobody wants these anymore, right? Doesn't worry. Uh, Golden Boy, you just saw the Dark Pictures Anthology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your first uh, glimpse of it, we have some reactions from you. Is what oh, you do? They were recording you. They said you were a little scared, not terrified. Not terrified, thankfully, okay. uh, because, you know, it was just a, you know, a normal a normal trailer, which Here is we fine. Go. See, you're and now, yeah, there's my face. You're yeah. unsettled for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you don't like that. You don't yeah, like don't like there. that. No, I don't, no, 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 not a fan of that one no. either. Nope. <laughs> the nope, the nope, nope, nope. Yeah, I think that was one of the jump scares in the trailer. I was <laughs> I got the will there at the end too yeah. yeah i am not crazy about horror uh, sure. i was actually talking to uh you know the crew at the back and i said you know it really takes a, a very twisted mind uh to come up with these things but it is impressive though yeah right oh, like yeah. you heard there in the interview uh you, you know Dan saying like, oh yeah, I, I love the jump scares. I live for the jump scares. It's 60 like, different death animations is what he, that was something uh, he wanted to make sure. Because of course, this is a choose your own adventure. If you've never played yeah. a dark picture anthology, right? You are moving characters in a third person. You jump around. It's like you're watching a movie. You make choices. Those choices leads to different permutations, different setups, different set settings, which leads to different deaths or yeah. no deaths if you're really, really good. But that's the idea, right? Is that you're playing in your own horror movie is developing and then gives you the reason to replay it. Yeah. Also a pleasant surprise for me, was that Ashley Tisdale, yeah. uh, isn't it? I didn't know that going into it, uh, which I was like, wow, this is definitely an upgrade from High School Musical, you know? Like, <laughs> this is definitely a, a quick turnaround, you know? Sure. Big, different genre. Uh, but yeah, and, and I think also, because we had the VO panel yesterday, which was great, yeah. and it, it just goes to show, right, like the impact of video games are having Hollywood stars coming in, you know, lending their voice, lending their face, their, 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 their acting, their skills to this, really bringing these characters to life is just gonna add even more layers to this uh, horror. And that's a huge thing if you've never played before. Performance capture is a huge deal for Supermassive. They go through, they use the facial animation. They want you to feel like you're watching a movie. So we will see soon enough how the Dark Pictures Anthology uh, pans out this time around with House of Ashes. But for now, let's toss it over to the one, the only, Jackie Jane. Brothers in arms, or each man for himself. Survival depends on choice. Will you find the path to save everyone? or be lost 
in the darkness. Push it. I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> a little excited about this title. Uh, Dan, I saw you taking lots of notes. You were taking notes about the mechanics, actually, but I know you're really thrilled with the story as well. Yeah. I mean, I am here for this. So. Well, I'm a big old history nerd, so I was super stoked to hear more about the setting. You know, it's, we, it's really tying in a lot of ancient lore about the Akkadian Empire. You have Naram Sin, this God, guy who declared himself like the god king of the Akkadian Empire and desecrated this temple, and now it's coming back to haunt us in modern day. It's also interesting to use the Iraq War as a setting. It is definitely a fraught uh, time period and event during which to set a game, but also I think a rich uh, sort of uh, backdrop for horror in this setting because you're tapping into sort of Mesopotamian mythology of Pazuzu, this king of wind demons who's tormenting all of these soldiers, and I'm really excited to see what they can do. I did a, I look, I told you, I was taking notes, I did some research. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait to experience all 60 death animations. I know the 60 <laughs> unique deaths. Okay, Avi Chan's face right now is just killing me. Uh, Avi, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that if I'm ever trapped in like a dark cave, I'm probably going to stick next to With Dan, Dan because yeah. he understands what we should be doing. King of what now? You're looking up all he's, this history look, on Pazuzu. He's the king of wind demons. No big deal. <laughs> Come okay. on. Everybody knows that. I don't even know what the king of wind demons is. What was it? Oh, he's Pazuzu. Oh my goodness, okay, You Pazuzu. may remember him from The Exorcist as well. Yes, okay. Um, Avi, you were obviously a big fan of the <laughs> so we're like Dan, just like, I could go on. <laughs> Pazuzu, <laughs> exactly. I was like, okay. Um, but Avi, you know, we've been talking about Resident Evil Village like at length. We both like horror survival, um, but also like when someone's playing with us and I thought that it's great that it's co-op. So we, we can be scared together while we play. Yeah, I'm just gonna be sitting <laughs> behind Dan and watching yeah, him play because that's exactly what I did with Until Dawn because I'm like cool I can't hold a controller and you know try to guide these teenagers to safety I'm I'm going to step on a branch and individually kill them all but Dan was going into like the history of all of it and I'm going is like oh 2003 that's that's a little too close and I didn't I didn't pass all my history classes but I hope that Pazuzu doesn't you know pop up anywhere in a textbook uh, but something that was really interesting for me when we were going through the trailers and going through that little dev talk is that they showed us Pazuzu. They showed us the monster. They showed us what it looks like inside the cave. So there's part of me wondering, like, usually with horror games, you don't show people the scary right away. So I'm wondering if maybe there's, like, a hidden layer of something else that they're not showing us yet that's going to catch people off guard, thinking that they're going in going, like, I did my research. I know everything. <laughs> I know how to deal with a Pazuzu. This is easy. <laughs> I know. So you two would fall into the depths together, and then I would somehow be stuck with Michael, and he'd be, like, talking about JRPGs, and I'd be like, oh, my goodness, we're in a world Listen, of hurt right now. <laughs> if I make a deal with the devil, I can turn into a very attractive protagonist, and then I can probably possess Pazuzu if I do negotiations like you can in SMT5. No, I Anyway, like one thing I want to say about this one is the free cam controls. That's different yeah. for Supermassive. So I'm going to wonder how that works because I feel like they're very in, con in control of camera angles and what you see before you make choices. I'm sure there's like transition phases where you actually make your choices and all other stuff. It's just uh, something new from them. So I just want to see how that plays out, especially when I'm with uh, a bunch of other people trying to get very scaled. <laughs> and Damon, I know you're all about retro games, but I also know you love a good story. I know for me, I felt like this had a lot of heart. There was dialogue that we saw and it really hit me yeah. to my Core. Yeah, and they showed to the actors doing the, the motion capture. I love horror movies. I love horror games. I'm a, a, a kind of a gore hound. I love blood and guts, and I love kill gags. Whoa. So, like, I'm looking forward to see all the inventive <laughs> and clever ways that Pazuzu is going to kill our soldier friends. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I just like saying Pazuzu, even though it's absolutely Pazuzu. horrifying. <laughs> yes. Anyways, goms, goms, I can't talk. Games have changed and evolved so much over the years, and with those changes, so has the coverage of our favorite games. Outlets like PC Gamer, IGN, Polygon, and GameSpot <laughs> have all led the way in gaming coverage, and for the first time ever, we've assembled the editors-in-chief of all those organizations and our voices of E3 series. Take a look. Hello, um, welcome back to E3 2021. My name is Chris String. I run gamesindustry.biz, which is one of the world's biggest video games business websites. Um, and joining me today to talk about E3 and the future of games in general are some of the biggest names in the video games media from IGN, GameSpot, Polygon, and PC Gamer. But rather than me do the introductions, I'd like to pass over to the panel. Um, hello, everybody. Um, who are you? What do you do? How did you get here? 
Sure. Uh, I'm Christopher Thomas Plant. That's my full birth name. Uh, it sounds like Christmas Plant if you say it really fast. Um, I'm the editor-in-chief of Polygon.com, uh, and it's a website. Thanks. This is Evan Lottie over at PC Gamer. I'm the editor-in-chief. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, Tina Amini, editor-in-chief of IGN. Um, I don't have a cool Christmas Twitter name, but I do have a really cool Halloween Twitter name uh, that someone gave to me, which is Tina Aminideville. So that's all I got. Hi, how you doing? My name is Randall Franzi. I'm the editorial director from GameSpot. Uh, I go by Randy in this country uh, because while it's okay to be called um, Randy in America, if you say that anywhere else in the world, you will be met with sniggers. You can't say, hi, I'm Randy to anyone else out there. Yeah, it's definitely true for us in the UK. Mm -hmm. So, so, so asking to all of you here, what does sort of E3 sort of represent to you? Um, I don't know if I want to pick on somebody, but Ra Randy, maybe. It, 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 it's difficult um, to separate E3 um, as a uh, professional working in the industry and as a fan. I, I've been in this industry for so long that, you know, it, it's E3 to me um, is usually just a lot of late nights, um, you know, being overworked, not having enough sleep. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, outside of the professional stuff, I think E3 for me, um, you know, it allows me uh, the chance to feel like a just a regular old fan of video games. You know, I, I still get hyped about stuff that you know gets um, gets revealed. Um, yeah, and 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 you know, for those brief shining moments of those you know major press conferences or you know during you know like a, a key announcement, you know, I can sort of forget that there's all this work that I need to do around this big event and just like be a fan of video games again. Yeah, yeah, having that in-person reaction, like you're typically sitting, if you're at a press conference, which I think probably for many of us, we maybe stopped attending them in, in like a physical capacity and maybe had like, we're in a war room, room of sorts with our team. But in general, just being able to sit next to your team and everyone's like reacting and then quickly scrambling to their keyboards again because they need to be typing up the news. That's obviously the primary element of it. Um, but for me personally too, it's also... It's a bit of a reunion because we'll all see each other in person, um, but it is that opportunity to have that one space, that one week. We all agree we're going to take that time and, and be in one space together and, and be able to connect. Yeah, I think E3 is the center of gravity too, right? I mean, in, in an environment, we saw what happened last year when, what happens when there's not an E3, right? Everyone kind of goes it alone and, you know, there's there's definitely some pros to that, but I think from from a coverage perspective, we like having, I mean, you guys probably all share the same attitude. We like having as much time as possible to, you know, do an interview, cover something and not be rushed off to the next thing back to back to back. But there is kind of an efficiency for us, I think, and the viewer, the consumer and having everything neatly collected under one roof for, you know, three or four days. Um, you know, the intensity and kind of spectacle that comes as a result of that, I think can be genuinely fun and exciting. Um, so, I mean, at least in North America, it looks like E3 will continue to be that center of gravity for the foreseeable future. For better or worse, you get reminded very blatantly that, like, this is a human enterprise. There are some real people who are putting in some, like, long hours trying to make for the best possible event for all of us. Well, this year is a digital event, and there are lots of questions about what E3 becomes in the future. There's a lot of, lot of chatter about that. So what do you hope to see from it? come sort of 2022 or beyond that what, what are your hopes for the for the future of e3 and what, what would you like to see it has to become more social and i think that is a thing that e3 was like leaning towards i i think it's like important to remember like what function e3 served back in the day you know in the 90s video games were for children or dorks um and mainstream publications covered it once a year and the all video game companies need to put all their money into one basket and pray that the New York Times wrote that story, right? Now it's the opposite. I mean, sure, newspapers are still <laughs> catching up, but otherwise, it, video games are the center of culture for young people. I think The Guardian wrote about that. And uh, because of that, E3's purpose no longer has to be, hey, let's get people excited for this one day. Let's put all of our money into it. It has to be something different, uh, which it seems to be more celebratory, right? Like that, that kind of has become a purpose. So I, I hope that whatever we see it become in the future um, is, like you said, Chris, more inclusive, that, um, that it is this thing that is bringing people in, that is the center of gravity, that is um, serving a larger communal purpose. And it is significant, you know, obviously, despite uh, the drawbacks of everything, of all of us being in a pandemic that's going to be running about two years long by the end of this, or hopefully just two years long by the end of this, 
Um, I think it is significant that when we are being in this digital format now, I think it's, it's nice that people can, more people can connect. Obviously it loses some of that social element. So I too, like Chris, hope that that is retained. And I selfishly hope that we all go back in person, but I think keeping some elements digital does help kind of connect to a broader community. And there can be various aspects of that. Obviously the press conferences are something that are typically digitally available to begin with, but are there some of those panels that have been introduced or some other versions of connectivity or versions of celebrations that um, is something that you know people can experience in, in person or at home too, to feel like they're a part of that entire celebration of the festivities of the news breaking and they can get a sense of that same excitement that they may be feeling home alone because for whatever reason they're not able to attend you know i i'm, I'm kind of hopeful that um the live aspect becomes a lot more like comic-con um, in the future in which it's much more a celebration of games games culture and community um while you're there live in person um I, I think the ESA you know as everyone pointed out has been sort of moving towards this hybrid thing where you know half of it is still behind closed doors meetings with retailers and then they're trying to you know introduce more people into it and they can play some games and look at some big booths but you know I, I think you know Comic-Con um, does that um, thing where it, it does service the fan aspect of it really well by having that, um, you know, focus on the show floor of, you know, the culture, things you can buy, you know, artists you can interact with, um, while still having that sort of hype vehicle and talking about the next big thing. So, you know, if, if anything, you know, I, I, would, I would, would hope that, you know, they push that sort of live community aspect more um, when, when you're there. How far do you think they should go in that direction? Like, would you just like to see them take a, a full-on Gamescom approach where there are, you know, potentially tens and th tens of thousands of people, you know, having a full public day, you know, dedicated to, you know, th that's really servicing the public more than the trade side, the business side? Yeah, I, I think a traveling E3 show that goes around all year <laughs> and visits multiple <laughs> cities. Some people um, hate you for that one. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, luckily, I'm not in the USA. Um, <laughs> Um, but, but, but yeah, and, and you know, I, I realize that, yeah, like, you know, P PAX does this to a certain extent um, as well. But, you know, I, I think what, um, you know, what, what E3 um, could be is, um, you know, still have that spotlight on the biggest um, and the best things and, you know, allowing people to, yeah, as I said, get hyped, get excited about their, you know, their favorite hobby. Yeah, I, and just to build off that really quick, I, I think the thing that developers are going to have to ask themselves now, and we've really hit this turning point culturally, is, can we let go of the secrecy, right? Because Comic-Con works because they put talent in front of people. But when you put talent in front of people, suddenly they have leverage. And that means, that, you know, they, they're they worth more money. I mean, just to be like very blunt. Um, and that goes for voice actors, that goes for designers. And I think there is a version of E3 in all conferences that makes a lot of sense where, yeah, we don't need to have vertical slices for every game. They cost a ton of money. They take up a ton of hours. There can be a distraction. But if these people become celebrities in their own right, that can take their place. That can that can create these Comic-Con environments. And I, I would love to see that. I think it would be healthy for the industry as a whole for people to actually be, again, in front of their games, not just behind them. Evan, actually, my, my, I'd love it. You mentioned the Gamescom model, but as a business journalist, I actually find I, I love E3. I love all the excitement of it. I love the buzz of it. But as a business journalist, it's a nightmare. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's just like it's sure. busy and noisy, and I want to talk about sales figures, right? And um, and uh, and it's uh, it's it's there's almost there's two almost two parts of me. There's the fan that wants to see the big booths and the exciting, the, all the noise and stuff, and then there's the part of me that wants to have a little quiet place to have a cup of coffee and a and a and a, and a bit of wi-fi and a bit of networking um so i i think i would like to have a, a sort of business show and a consumer show that sort of sits side by side i don't know how you you you, you i don't know how you fit that into the lacc but um it, i i think i think i think that's something that i would like but i mean I, at the same time they're sort of moving to that sort of hybrid model anyway and i and i think transition is always tough I'd be, I'd love to see that kind of thing. Yeah. Is that something you're interested in? I mean, with, with the kind of competition that we've referenced here with PAX, right? It's just essential that these events have a true purpose that is contemporary and, 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 you know, really self-aware of what else is happening and the other options people have. I mean, when you go to PAX, right, you see, 
families. I see lots of, you know, thinking back to the practices I've gone, it's like mothers and daughters and, and you know, fathers and sons that, that have like decided to take their vacation to this event because they're a huge fan of, you know, Game X um, and they want to hang out and, and be a part of that, right? And I mean, like, it, it, it's interesting to get a sense of like our, our kind of multifaceted feelings in this conversation because like GDC is probably my favorite event of the year because the press is not the focus at all. There's not like big announcements or anything. And yet we as press get some of our best material out of GDC because it's an environment where game developers are just talking to each other and we're kind of listening in. And it's an environment where game developers like have their guard down. They're not, you know, engage in the deep secrecy that I think Chris is referencing there very often, right? They're doing panels, they're sort of, you know, talking up their design and, you know, their, their narratives and like, you know, what's kind of interesting to them in the moment. And that's a great environment for interviewing and discovering stuff. So I don't know. I mean, wh whichever direction E3 takes long term, I just think it sort of has to not compromise and sort of meet in the middle of all this stuff, but really have clarity and identity. Well, I'm very, very much aware of the time. So I'm going to wrap up with a, a sort of fun last question. So what is a memorable E3 interview that you can share with us? Mine's a little sad in retrospect, but I still very much enjoyed the conversation that I had. Um, it was before No Man's Sky came out uh, and I interviewed Sean Murray and he was so excited to talk about this game and to talk about all the procedural generation and the, that work that was going into it. Alongside that interview, he had one of his programmers like showing me behind the scenes how that procedural generation worked. I thought it was such an interesting way of doing an interview where I was actually seeing behind the scenes elements of the of what was actually going into the game while he was speaking to them in what was a really eloquent way. Uh, so it's it's only a little sad in retrospect because obviously those are there are a lot of moments where developers kind of maybe regret like did I say too much? Did I accidentally promise something that I wasn't intending on promising? But I think ultimately at the core. For me in that experience, like I could just see his passion and I could just see his pride for what his team was working on. And I think that there's something still, you know, really genuine and, and true and, and heartfelt about that. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, for me, uh, my, my favorite interviews are, are usually the conversations that happen at restaurants or bars afterwards, um, because E3 interviews tend to be very uh, prepared. Um, people are very press trained for them. Um, so I guess I'll share uh, something else, which is my favorite moment of E3, and it's very ego-driven. Uh, but a, a few years ago, I was at E3 at the front of the main hall, right? And it was the final day, and I was doing a direct-to-camera of like, hey, this is E3, I'm going to wrap it up. And at this point, I'm like running on no sleep, and I'm like covered in sweat. I look like an absolute mess. And from behind me, this very lovely, tall and handsome man comes uh, around front, steps in front of our camera as I'm preparing, bops me on the nose and just goes, too cute, and then walks off. And I, um, it was like the most, it was the nicest I've ever felt in my entire life. Like you, Chris, uh, you know, the best conversations at E3 happen outside the floor, outside these kind of formal settings. Dean Hall is someone who's just an absolutely unfiltered, you know, uh, water hose of, of information and design thoughts. So like anytime I sit down with him, it's a chance to sort of sort of you get the sense that he's peering into his sketchbook. I mean, this is someone who's fundamentally optimistic and imaginative and, you know, half the things that he tells you, like his idea for a mountaineering game or because he climbed Mount Everest, like they're not going to come true, but it's still like uh, just someone who's just constantly dreaming and, and is like completely removed from that scripted, you know, media trained personality that we're referring to here. Real quick for me, just like Chris, not the best, but for me, the most embarrassing, um, having to play Sekiro in front of Miyazaki um, and then do an interview, couldn't get past the first, the, the first enemy I, I, I came across and then I had to do a 15 minute chat with him. So that was lovely. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, that's it from us. Thank you to Tina, Randy, Evan, and Christopher. Thank you so much. Um, do check out all of our websites um, for all your E3 news and goings on. Um, have fun during the, uh, during, the, during, the, during the event, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. IGN Summer of Gaming has officially partnered with the ESA for E3 2021. IGN Summer of Gaming is now all summer long. 
from major press conferences and announcements at E3 2021 to the IGN Expo with exclusive gameplay and reveals to exciting first looks at the hottest new games and in-depth developer interviews, IGN Summer of Gaming has it all. IGN Summer of Gaming begins right now. I love Pac-Man 99. I, it's so fun. And the thing is, I'm super competitive too. I'm just like, bet, you think you're gonna get top 20? Get out of here, get out of my face, get out of my face, get bunched on. It's my first session, I got like top 30. The next session, it was top 20. And then the third session forward, it was top 10. I just, I see what I want and I go get it. I want my first place and they're gonna give it to me. I don't care if I don't get first place, it's fine. But that's like the mentality I have for it. And uh, yeah, I'm actually super competitive. Thanks to our sponsors at DoorDash. Get more from your neighborhood from restaurants and convenience to grocery and corner stores. All right, folks, well, we got some more great games coming our way, no question about it, but what is it that draws us into a game story? Is it a whodunit, maybe becoming a heroic protagonist, perhaps? Or maybe it's just a story that makes us laugh, that keeps us coming back. When we return, more on what stories we love in our games. Summer of Gaming has officially partnered with the ESA for E3 2021. IGN Summer of Gaming is now all summer long. From major press conferences and announcements at E3 2021 to the IGN Expo with exclusive gameplay and reveals to exciting first looks at the hottest new games and in-depth developer interviews, IGN Summer of Gaming has it all. IGN Summer of Gaming begins right now. Those that surprise me, those that make me think, that leave room for interpretation. What I've always looked for in a game was just this really grand epic story that makes you feel like you're part of a universe that's not Earth. Ooh, I'm such a sucker for narrative-driven stories. I appreciate really good character development. Stories that you can shape yourself. You know, I always go back to the telltale. Just having the option to have choices, to really feel like your choices matter. Like, what do you mean? I picked this and he died? Feeding you breadcrumbs of what happened here and what this story is, and it's up to you, the player, 
to sort of like infer what you will mm -hmm. and just take you down this rabbit hole. I just got done playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I didn't want to stop playing it. I've been tempted to just start playing it immediately after I've finished it. I like stories that are willing to explore more difficult topics, but not treat it like it's something that you can joke about. Games are empathy machines. And I can just appreciate when they have this absolutely massive narrative and so much going on that it could absolutely turn people away from it and they don't care. Set in places or have storylines that are incredibly depressing or uh, morbid, but then they inject these, these bits and pieces of humor. Um, Fallout does that really well. For me, the stories I appreciate the most in games ugh, are always women kicking ass. Welcome back to E3 Live from Los Angeles. And I want to continue this conversation about storytelling in games. Every game has some sort of story to tell, but some games have really taken their narratives to cinematic levels. Games like <gasps> The Last of Us, Detroit Become Human, Bioshock, Red Dead, just to name a few. Guys, what type of stories do you like in your games? Alex, I'm starting with you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the easy uh, answer for me will always and forever be Halo. Of course. Uh, the Halo <laughs> 1 story, it, it was actually one of the first like as a kid, like one of the first like narrative games I actually paid attention to for some reason, I got into the books and then I, from there it just became a, a fascination. Um, another one that always stays in the back of my mind uh, was Skies of Arcadia. Oh, wow, uh, okay. I, I, I love that game as a kid. And something about like being a pirate, but believing in yourself and all that, it was just like a very uplifting story. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed it so much. So yeah, th those are ones that stand out for me. Aww. Jackie, what about you? Um, I think I've spoken at length about the Super Nintendo games that have had a profound influence on me. Um, but actually, I wanted to talk about The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2. Um, you Great. know, yeah, I mean, pff, duh, right? I'm glad somebody finally talking about it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, have y'all heard about this, this game This little before? independent studio, yeah, no, exactly. no, no, nobody's It's not extremely it. popular, but, yeah. um, I'll be honest, though, like, that game haunts me to this day. Sure. I just sure. remember, I mean, the opening scene. Yeah. I still have not seen a game just punch me in the face like that. Like, yeah. I just remember being terrified, sad, angry, and then I was like, I'm two minutes into this thing, and I don't know what the hell is going on here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's and heavy. Yeah, it was just extremely heavy. Um, and I thought The Last of Us 2 was fantastic as well. I know, uh, you know, people are quite divided on that title. But for me, with Ellie and Abby, it's just we saw how human they were. Yeah. You know, um, there were times where I absolutely hated them. And yeah. I was just like, I can't stand you. And then there were times where they had me weeping, and I would just totally empathetic to their situation exactly yeah. and i think that um you know there's there's tons of amazing games out there that you know we're, we're just like man that hits me right in my gut and my core that sure. i can definitely relate to that but just those two titles in particular it's just a fantastic well, series and especially yeah. for the last of us and their storytelling right for you're talking about things we can relate to for me it's the ones where we can't but we still love that game and so yeah. for me you know the final uh, scene in the last of us no spoilers right but the final time you're playing the last of us part one yeah. like i remember finishing that and putting it down and be like I, I got killed because I thought I was going to have a choice. I thought it was going to do the video game thing of, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? Yeah, and I got yeah. destroyed because I didn't do what the thing it needed me to do. And so yeah. I remember finishing that and being like, Joel's the bad guy. And having that conversation about that with so many different people. And yeah. then going to part two and then throughout the game being like, don't do that, Ellie. But I keep wanting to play as her and understand what's happening. Yeah. Like That's the power of video games, right? Indeed it is. Storyline-based games aren't the only ones we love. When we return here at E3 Live from LA, we are taking a look at our favorite first-person shooters of all time. Halo. Don't go anyway. I wonder what Golden Boy is going to say. Gonna so, I wonder what Golden, Golden Boy is going to say, all right? We'll shoot our shot in just a few. <laughs> My brain turned on playing Super Mario Brothers for the NES. I started with Super Mario on the NES. I think my first Nintendo I broke though because I thought it was a piggy bank. So I shoved a bunch of pennies in it. I have a photo of my mum with me literally in her belly playing Duck Hunt. I got really, really into Duck Hunt. It definitely like helped me learn not to be a sore loser because every time I would see that dog come up and laugh at me, ooh. 
room filled with so much heat <laughs> as a five-year-old. Eventually, me and my big brother were saving up for a long, long time to finally afford ourselves a Game Boy. A pink Game Boy color with Pokemon Red. I got that sweet, transparent purple Game Boy color. Went to town on some uh, Pokemon Blue. Pokemon Yellow was like my number one. And way better than Red and Blue because it was harder because you start off with a Pikachu. I wouldn't say I really found my passion until Super Nintendo. Link to the Past is just mind-blowing to me as a kid. I must have been five. I started with the Nintendo 64. Donkey Kong 64, Nintendo 64, yellow cartridge and putting it in the, you know, blowing on it to make sure it worked properly. We got a Nintendo 64, we started getting into GoldenEye and stuff like that. Did you also play Mario Kart with your cousins? I did, I got so good, I learned how to drift with my feet. I don't know why.《篝火营地》是中国领先的游戏媒体，创立于2018年，致力于为全世界的中文游戏玩家提供专业、精准、迅速的资讯情报。《篝火营地》立足于中国，与多家国际一流游戏媒体同行，达成正式内容合作关系
you know, that, that was our focus to make cool things. So the pressure was, was brought on by ourselves, you know, and, uh, and in the interactions that, that we did have with our fans, especially like when QuakeCon took off, that was awesome. That was a lot of pressure. You know, I should go and meet people in, in, in person. But I do believe that, that there is more pressure on young teams today, especially ones that have had success, because I've seen it. The biggest handicap of, of people at, to, after making a successful game is their own success and the pressure that the world puts on them, the pressure that they put on themselves. So we were blessed, to be honest, to, to kind of create this team while kind of the internet created that, you know, the, the behemoth that it is now. Uh, I would love to say that we were so clever that uh, that we we made these we had this great vision that we executed on, but uh, but no, we were just making cool stuff, and the world just just came to us. Woo, baby! Time to talk about one of my favorite genres in gaming. Welcome back to E3 live from Los Angeles. Now, Doom is certainly one of the godfathers of the FPS genre, along with Wolfenstein. Thank you, Avali, for you. fanning me down there. You know, you also got classics like GoldenEye, a bunch of games we grew up with that we loved. Uh, but, guys, you know, what FPS titles would you consider your personal faves? David, we'll start with you. Well, it's funny, right before we came back, we were talking about how hot it is in the studio right now. Oh. You were just getting some fan service. Yeah. Someone ah. mentioned it's... Hell. Oh. Someone mentioned... Oh. He made a weep joke. Oh. Someone uh, mentioned uh, Super Hot, that it's Super Hot near and here. That reminded me, yeah, Super Hot's one, definitely one of my favorite shooters of the past few years. Such a cool mechanic that time only moves when you do. Yeah. It's not a shooter that's about quick reflexes. It's not a twitch shooter. It's about careful planning, planning out your, your next move. Um, that appeals to the turn-based strategy fan in me. And on top of that, it tells a very cool and creepy story. Yeah, yeah super, hot. super Hot's great. Also, great in VR as yeah, well. Really absolutely. fun, really fun. Uh, uh, Dan, what about you? I have to give it up for the game that really introduced me to the world of competitive multiplayer shooters, and that is Unreal Tournament. Let's go! Oh, throwback. Yeah. It was one of my all-time favorite games playing Instagib CF, all-time great, Instagib CTF, excuse me, and uh, my favorite map of all time. I don't think it's been rivaled to this day, and that is Facing World. Yes. One of the best yeah. multiplayer Hell maps yeah. ever. You're just on this moon base. The physics in that game were so good. The gunplay was so good. I can't wait uh, to go back and revisit it when I get home. Now I'm, now I'm jonesing to play. Now you, now you want to play. Uh, what about for you, Michael? I am an OG counter strike player so yeah, cs 1.6 nice. i love i love cs because there's a very particular way to play it like spray patterns strategies positioning it's uh, so important are you ct are you on t side yep uh and where do you, where exactly do you plant the bomb there's so many intricate things about cs that i actually learned so it made me feel smart it made me feel like i was good at the game because i had a couple friends who taught me all the very specific things that you should do uh that, that's competitive multiplayer i know it's this next what i'm about to say is it's not necessarily a first person shooter it's a first person rpg but deus ex the original like came Ooh, out in 2000 okay. changed my life heck yeah that is a great game obviously i know you're traditionally you know league of legends and you know those games but i know you branch outside what do you got so i was going to say valorant at first okay, but then obviously. i realized i remember when i was like second or third grade i played this online game it was the poor man's uh counter-strike and it was called soldier front it was <laughs> totally <laughs> random it was like you couldn't afford csgo i couldn't afford like an xbox to play modern warfare or something so i was just like this 10 year old kid i'm like Ha, ha, I shot someone, ha, I shot someone. That's the other thing. I didn't have to purchase it, so my parents didn't know I was playing it. But Wonderful. shout out to anyone who remembers that game. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, I like that. Some good ones that I'm going to rattle it off for you. Dusk, play that. Great mm -hmm. game. Uh, Bullets Per Minute, another fantastic game. Try that out. Not a first-person shooter per se, but Ghost Runner, unbelievable. If you yeah. haven't checked that game out yet, really, really worth your time. Uh, and then there's a small independent game called Halo. That's the <laughs> other one that you need to play right now. If you don't have Master Chief Collection, it's it's from an independent studio called uh, 343 Studios. Uh, <laughs> check them out. I'm getting all hot and bothered talking about it. I can uh, tell. I yeah. can tell. But yes, there are so many great FPS games. We didn't even get through it like Quake, obviously Granddaddy, Quake Bioshock as well. Oh, like you got a lot of great games, guys. But we're all done talking shooters for now. But when we return, an exclusive look at some one of our favorite devs that we've seen here, Freedom Games Dark Deity. Let's go. So grab your swords because that is going to be coming up next. This isn't my contract.
As a part of Play For All, GameSpot will be bringing you the latest gaming news and announcements, interviews with developers, the biggest press conferences, and lots more. Play For All is our yearly online event that combines the excitement and announcements of E3 with charity live streams the following week with lots of special guests who are going to help us raise money for able gamers. So join us in June for E3 and Play For All on GameSpot.com, YouTube.com slash GameSpot, Twitch.tv slash GameSpot, and as a part of E3's official broadcast. See you then. GoGo Indie is a Chinese game company founded in 2018, designed to provide information to Chinese gamers for free and accurate information. GoGo Indie is based in China and has worked with many international e-commerce companies to form a formal collaboration with them. It is constantly providing the latest e-commerce news in the first time to the whole Chinese e-commerce community. Since its inception, GoGo Indie's e-commerce content has exceeded 5 million users in the world, and has helped countless millions of users and players. 我们的愿景是做游戏文化传播者。您可以在全球各大手机应用市场下载 GoGo i n d i APP， 或者访问三 w 点 gamebonfire com 来加入游戏传播者的行列。Welcome back to E3 2021. Our next game it takes place in a mythical land broken by the horrors of war and evil. With an array of weapons and magic at your side, are you ready to command one of the game's 30 characters to become a legend in the land of dark deity? If so, here's a look at the road ahead. Maybe I should raise my rates. I failed my people. Weakness has consequences. This would make for a fine take. Hey there, I'm Chip Moore, game director for Dark Deity, and it's finally time to reveal the release date. You may not know this, but Dark Deity is the first game that we've ever worked on, so to be at E3 showing this game is a dream come true. And we thought, what better way to make the most out of our first E3? And to release Dark Deity today, live on stream, right now. As of this moment, Dark Deity is available on Steam. I can hear Michael and Dan going crazy back there. Dark Deity is available now for download at Steam, so go check it out. And the developer showcases continue here at E3 2021. Now it's time for Eureka Studio. Hello, everyone. 
Welcome to Eureka Studios E3 Showcase. I'm Daniel, and I'm Stella. Eureka is a published team which started the business in 2019. So far, we've helped several indie games achieve success in the Chinese market. And today, we are here to check out the latest selection of our upcoming titles. There are quite a lot of games here. Let's just get started, and I bet you'll find a new favorite. I need to find a missing girl, a journalist. But met a lot of resistance. Dead already. Zishu, you need to find the journalist. What the hell is going on? It seems I'm trapped in some kind of death loop. No, this place is not what it used to be. Figure out what is going on. The only way to go further is to get stronger. SWS is a tactical siege game based on real-world physics. In this game, you can create your own squad and command them in battle, capture enemy cities, and you will win the war. Hello,我是超逼真的工程模拟器的开发者郭星 If you are a fan of roguelike games, you have to check out Metal Mind and its 100% customizable mecha modification system. Josh 我们游戏试一款融合了机甲改造和 it's an open-world survival craft game where gathering, crafting, and exploration fused with martial arts and the battle experience.
Mortal Mayor is a construction and management sim game. You will play as a local god that watches over the land. Befriend other gods and use magic to help your residents build a town. Let's check out another simulation game. Reshaping Mars is a strategy game where players construct and manage their bases on Mars. Your goal is to modify the planet into a place suitable for life.全球的玩家朋友们你们好还有多势力之间的纷争和冲突，这些都将给你带来不小的挑战。希望重塑火星可以为你开启一场特别的火星之旅。Moism is a Chinese martial art detective game. You will play as a detective who defeats enemies with wit and a silver tongue. Crack the case and bring justice to the world. 不过这片披风上有一处奇怪的痕迹That's all for today's showcase. We hope you're looking forward to these games. We'd like to thank our talented developers for bringing their games here. And thank you too for watching this video. To stay up to date with all the latest news, please be sure to follow our official Twitter account, Eurica Studio. Thank you all again and have a good time.
Hey everybody, welcome back to E3 2021 and after that Eureka Studio Showcase. But before we talk about it, Golden Boy, again, thank you to Razer. Uh, of course, all this technology fueling us, running us here over on the E3 stage. Uh, that baby right there. The Blade 14? Yes, I am, I've been eyeing it all day. Uh, it is gorgeous and I want it. You're going to get it? You talked, about, you talked a good game about pre-ordering beforehand. Yeah, no, I definitely uh, am going to pick that up okay. for sure because I think, you know, like, I, I need something slim. You know, I need something slim. And right. I need something to play all of those great Eureka games on uh, because I actually uh, did quite uh, like a few of them. Loop Mancer, the first game that they showed, a 3D side-scroller, yeah. uh, it looked pretty solid. Uh, I, it, we were trying to figure out if it was, like, more Metroidvania-like or, like, Dead Cells-like. We were trying to get the, get the feel on it. So I'm interested in jumping into that and checking it out. Sure, there you go. You get a look at it right there. Uh, I think uh, from a E3 graphical perspective, the one that was the made me turn my head the most. There's a lot of other ones that are coming up that are stylized that have a, a lot yeah, of different yeah, looks yeah. to them. And I did appreciate the start of this one, uh, Eureka being like, "Hey, we're going to show you a bunch of stuff. We hope you find your next favorite game here, right?" Because again, yeah. we're talking about E3 and the fact that you can start with something as big as Nintendo, all these proven IPs, and then get close to the end of the day here with Eureka and the GameSpot uh, showcase we're about to do with some of the indie games and talk about smaller stuff you might have missed. You know, so it, what I like about what we're doing here is for any of our viewers who, you know, have not had an opportunity to attend E3 before, this is typically what how, how the experience goes. You oh, have sure. your really big boots, right? You got your PlayStation, your Xbox, your Nintendo, blah, 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 right? But then you have a bunch of these other smaller pockets of boots. Yeah. And here's where you find some real gems. So I, I like a, a lot of what we saw there. Um, the one that actually caught my attention was Immortal Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I was going to toss out Immortal Mayor. Which Mayer. I believe which is what we're looking at right now. That looked really fun. I was like, put that game on a Switch, and I'm in. Exactly. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Here you yeah. go. Be a god, help the people of the town, <laughs> go over there, befriend other gods. What is not to like, ladies and gentlemen? Of yeah. course, we have more games to show off, Way more. believe it or not. So it's time for you to sit back and enjoy the GameSpot Play For All Showcase. Hey everyone, I'm Tamar Hussain, managing editor of GameSpot.com, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Play For All Showcase, brought to you by GameSpot and The Mix. In this showcase, we're going to be highlighting developers that represent the bright future of video games, boosting awareness for games and teams that haven't had as much visibility as they deserve. More importantly, we're highlighting games and teams that encourage inclusivity, tolerance, and togetherness at their core. All the games in this showcase are made by a diverse set of creators that have important stories to tell. These are all games that made us think, smile, get excited about, and feel good about what games have to offer. And we hope you feel the same way too. What is poppin' everyone? My name is Justin Woodward, co-founder of The Mix, the Media Indie Exchange, and the independent game development team in Terrabang Entertainment. You guys may not know, but The Mix and GameSpot have teamed up for over five years now during E3 to showcase some of the most interesting indie titles that have graced our screens, with interviews and trailers from developers from all over the world. This showcase is no exception. To the sentiment that Tamor expressed, our goal is to really shed light on some gems hidden or otherwise that you may not have had the honor of checking out. So with that, let's get started with some up and coming game trailers and hop into our first interview with Zalaver Nelson, who will dive into his new game, El Paso Elsewhere. Let's hit it.
The most powerful drink around the world. Fight with your fists. Enter your name in its maker. So Texas that gained another 46 stories yesterday. All below ground. It's extremely haunted. And Max is at the bottom. The Rakule. Lord of the Vampires. She's waiting for me. See y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Kansas So Live and Hills, aka Cam. That's when I have to be at y'all. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. This is. E3 2021. I'll be back tomorrow later on today because they're supposed to be having um, 
tonight and we'll be showcasing it probably on Trek Radio official when I get back in time. But uh, other than, nonetheless, I'm gonna get myself out of here right now. Until you step your real game up, smoke, please, with fighting and with, with stream at a time with love and peace and hair grease. I gotta go. I got to go. Peace. See y'all. Love y'all.